What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Owen and AJ Talks. I'm Owen Finch, and I'm here with... AJ Talon, and today it's... Yellow Jackets, Season 1, Episode 2. Oh. And today's episode is called f uh, it's There's a meaning behind that term. Um, and you can see why the episode gets its name uh, later on in the show uh, and in this episode. Uh, but that's the, the name of the episode. Um, this episode was directed by Jamie Travis, um, and it was written by, uh, Jonathan Lisko, um, Ashley Lyle, and Bo Nickerson. So, uh, you know, um, you know, always good to see, uh, some new people, uh, directing the episode and everything like that. It kind of makes sense. You can't have the same director direct every episode because, you know, you're going to burn the director out and everything like that. You don't want that to happen, mm -hmm. so... Uh, I don't know anything about them uh, directing-wise. Um, I didn't do the research ahead of time because uh, I've had a busy week, so I didn't have time. Um, all right, so do you want to guess when this episode came out? Because uh, you did a pretty good job. Um, it came out in 2021. I don't remember the month. So I'm going to guess um, October 15th, 2021. Oh, ooh, no, oh. no, no, no. November 21st, 2021. So... I was close. I was yeah, close. Yeah, only like uh, like a uh -huh. month and like a few days off and all that type of stuff. So, yeah. you know, uh, I think a month and like six days off, you know, but who's counting, right? I guess I am. I guess I'm counting. You are um, But yeah, uh, I'm actually excited. You know, uh, we came back and did this because uh, typically when we review a show, when we have to review the next episode, we usually take like a few months break off of it. So I'm glad we kind of just jumped right back into it, especially too, because episode one, and then with a pretty big cliffhanger, um, I'm happy that we didn't like, uh, you know, do it two days in a row because episode one was like a two hour video. I'm glad we like broke it up and we did like a fun video in between and today's like this video. So that's good. Um, yeah. I don't know why I'm talking about any of this. I just, I just am. Um, but whatever. Um, let's just start talking about the episode itself. Um, so this is actually where we're going to really use the format of uh, talking about everything in the past for us and the present because there was no reason to like really jump back and forth. Um, obviously, if I find a reason, we'll go through it, but uh, let's just start talking about the episode. Um, so the episode uh, kicks off, at least in, the 90, in 1996 anyways, immediately right after uh the plane like crashing like pretty much immediately after episode one came up uh finished off well, uh, the planes like it's interesting because um like like we, we start off like the planet hasn't crashed yet we get we just get a different perspective on it the yeah. last time we saw yeah. the plane crashing from shauna's and then now we get it from um like the the uh the same like couple seconds before the plane crashed from uh misty's point of view yeah so uh yeah, the plane's crashing. Uh, you see everybody's, like, afraid of it and everything like that. Uh, however, like, uh, Missy doesn't seem, like, as terrified as everybody else is. She doesn't really seem like she's enjoying it, but she doesn't really have much of an emotion towards it. Uh, which is kind of messed up. Like, a plane's freaking crashing, and you're in the plane crash, and you're just not reacting at all. Like, what the fuck? Um, but whatever. Um, so she has, like, a flashback back to... Uh, 1992, um, she's, like, probably a freshman at high school at this point, if this is 1996, I would assume this is 1992, because, uh, it's very much implied that she's a freshman, and she's obviously, uh, you know, she's the nerdy girl anyways, but she's even more nerdy, you know, very socially awkward, um, even back then, um, and she gets a prank call from somebody where, um, you know, uh, we found out, like, a rumor has been spread around her that she basically had, um, like, a one-night stand with someone. Um, and, uh, you know, Misty obviously is denying it and everything like that. And, you know, typically when you see shows do this, uh, the, the, uh, the person who's being pranked doesn't really have much of a response. But Misty's trying to basically uh, not let her get her down or everything like that. Basically saying, you know, that the words that you're saying uh, really don't hurt me too much. Um, and she talks about, you know... Um, how I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna overachieve you and everything like that. But the person, uh, anything, that flat up. yeah. And then the other person's like, all right, whatever, fucking weirdo. Yeah. Um, 
I did like this though, because Misty had like pretty good comebacks for the most part for like everyone that like made fun of her and everything like that. Uh, but you know, this kind of makes you feel sorry for Misty. Like she's still a psycho, but like you could kind of probably see why Misty's like this psycho. Uh, in 1996, I know it's weird because this is the past, but the 1996 is also the past, so this was like super past. <laughs> so, um, well, I, I understand why she's more so like um, like socially inept, like. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, like, I feel bad for her. She doesn't have any friends. Uh, I, th I don't think that still really excuses you from having, like, serial killer tendencies. Yeah. Um, also, you said uh, she had a good comeback. I'm like, I don't know. If a 14-year-old was trying to roast me and she quoted Plato, I'd probably call her a fucking weirdo, too. And I was I was definitely a nerdy kid, but I'm like, oh, yeah. God, just stop. Well, better um, comeback than I would have. Better, I'm saying better comeback than normal nerds have had when they've when they've had this happen to them, though. Like, she yeah, had she didn't like stumble over her words, and she didn't like just buckle down immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She like tried to make a comeback. Yeah, I'm just um, saying, like from uh, my like, it probably wasn't a good comeback, but from my point of view, I thought it was because you know, typically when this happens, they don't have anything, so she, there was at least something. Um, yeah, and you know. I feel like this is, like, what Missy's thinking about, like, it's her, like, life flashing before life, so this kind of, like, gives Missy, like, a little bit of incentive to kind of, like, sprint into action, like, doing this plane crash to try to help everybody out, um, and, you know, you see that the plane, uh, is on the verge of crash, and we see the plane struggling to, uh, keep control of it and everything like that, uh, we see, like, the coach, um, is, uh, trying to make sure, like, everyone has, like, the oxygen mask on and everything like that, um, Eventually, uh, you know, um, the soccer team is trying to, like, bust open the door, uh, so that way they can, like, uh, you know, jump out and everything like that, like that and really save themselves, uh, because, like, the plane falls and it's on fire and everything like that, um, and, you know, eventually they're successful, um, not everyone makes it out, one person, um, I don't remember, I don't even know who this person was, I think it was just some random background character, uh, like, uh, uh, died while the oxygen mask was on because, like, a piece of the plane, like, went through the oxygen mask and, like, stabbed them and all that type of stuff, so, um... Yeah, I liked how, like, after the plane crashed, they're, like, everyone's still, like, freaking out, like, and there's still immediate danger. Like yeah. you said, Misty, the person sitting in front of Misty got, like, a piece of metal lodged in her throat, and then, uh, we see, like, the, um, like, the upper cabin is, like, on fire, and, like, uh, one of the, um, like, uh, flight attendants was, like, you know, like, fucking, like, all, like, on the ground, screaming, burning to death. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, Jackie's trying to get, uh, Shauna to come back to it, because, uh, I know we said the last episode, like, Sh Shauna woke up, but I, I guess, because I also, I, it also has been a bit since I've seen this, I think Shauna did wake up, but it, she was probably still feeling, like, a little bit of the effect of, uh, the pill that she took, so. Was uh, it? Oh, I, I thought Shauna woke Jackie up, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think it's the other way around. I think Jackie had to, like, wake Shauna up. And Shauna gets up, but then, uh, you know, everyone's running uh, towards uh, the door that's been, like, pushed off its uh, hinges and all that stuff. But then Shauna sees that uh, Van is still in danger. She's uh, trapped um, in the, uh, like, seat of the plane. Um, and, like, there's, uh, like, the ca upper cabin's on fire behind her, and pretty much uh, she doesn't have, like, a lot of time to, uh, you know really get out of there and everything like that. And Shauna tries to save her, uh, but realizes that basically Shauna, uh, there's really nothing that we she could really do at this point, and Jackie doesn't want Shauna to die saving her. Um, so Jackie and Shauna both, like, leave. I really like, like, the tone of this, because, like, when Jackie, like, hits the ground, not ja well, when Shauna hits the ground, um, you know, uh, you can definitely tell, like, this was, like, from her point of view, you're, like, uh, all the sounds get, like, really faded and muted, and there's, like, there's, the, there's the distorted music that plays, like, you know, this is about, I think, what you would experience if you had just gone through this plane crash and everything like that. Yeah, like, shell talk, yeah. Um, um, well, one, I like how, like, because you said, uh, Jackie and Shauna, like, leave Van. Um, Jackie has to, like, you know, pull Shauna away and, like, force her out of the plane. Like, yeah. Shauna didn't want to leave Van. But, um, you know, Jackie, like, it, it makes sense. Shauna is Jackie's best friend, and she the, sees the fire approaching, so she, you know, like, it's like you know, has to rip Shauna away. And um, because I was roasting Shauna for being such a shitty person last episode, I like how she, like, did not want to leave Van yeah. uh, behind. And also, it makes sense because later in this episode, Van is, like, fucking hates Jackie, but, like, she seems okay with Shauna. 
so, you know, I, I was obviously Sean didn't, didn't want to leave, but Jackie, um, and, you know, from Van's point of view, I get it. It like, Shauna tried to help her for like 30 seconds. And then Jackie like was like, nope, we're leaving her. Yeah. You know, if, if I were Van, I'd be like, like rationally speaking, I think Jackie like makes sense. Yeah. But like from Van's point of view, it's like, wow, you fucker, you tried to leave me to burn to death. Yeah. Um, I also like how, cause you mentioned everyone like gets out of the plane. Uh, cause like the emergency exit is like blocked open is like blocked. Uh, Misty is like the first one to get to the emergency exit and like tries to like rip it open, pull, push it open. Yeah. And then um, that you know, like seeing her do that, like a bunch of the other girls come over and they're all like you know screaming, crying, like trying to push it open. I like how they're like all the actresses did a great job. Uh, they're all like panicking and they're like, oh my god, get it open, get it open, you know, like they're all doing a great job, like yeah. selling like panic. Yeah. Because you, know, like, you know, like you see fire spreading, they're all like trying to get out of here alive. Yeah, it wasn't um, like uh, over the top. Like it wasn't o- too over the top or anything like that. Like this is exactly what how you expect people to react if like a plane's yeah. about to crash with, on and uh, catching fire and everything like that. Right. You know, also like Misty being the first one to go for the emergency exit I, and like try to like push it open. I think was a you know a good way to show that she's like like seems to be the best suited for the situation. Yeah. And like you know everyone following her lead, like they see Misty doing that and then they all start doing it. Um, you know kind of foreshadows the rest of this episode where Misty's kind of the one taking charge. Yeah. So, you know, everyone's kind of, uh, out, we find out that there's out in the window, this out in the, uh, absolute nowhere. Um, and obviously it kind of works to have the timeline be 1996. Uh, cause obviously if it was 2021, I think this show would have been over a little later. Cause we would, there would be cell phones and things like that. You know, I think they'd still be screwed because obviously uh, they wouldn't have any signals or anything like that, but they would be less screwed because, you know, I, th- I assume you could still like call 911 and everything like that. So I think this is why the timeline for 1996 works better because like, you know, they have none of that or anything like that. They're just basically screwed. Um, I have to agree. Uh, when we get to a later scene in this episode, I'm going to bitch a bit <laughs> about um, about something, but like we'll get to that when we get to it. Sure. Um, oh. And then, uh, yeah, everyone's kind of... Uh, panicking um you know we see that the uh pilot uh died uh i think he got like slammed into the window i don't remember exactly what happened to him but i remember he he died most of the adults pretty much don't make it out of this situation uh like his co-pilot didn't make it um and then uh you know uh we see everyone's stuff just uh you know um scattered and all of their like parts all the plots of the airplane are just destroyed. Like, this plane just basically uh, took a really bad hit. Uh, and at the end of it, we see that, uh, you know, um, one of the coaches, um, you know, is his leg is trapped um, underneath one of the pieces of the plane. And, you know, uh, everyone's, like, trying to uh, move him, but, like, his leg's, like, basically crushed under there. It's too heavy for him to uh, be pulled out, so they have to move the part. And we see that his legs just been like crushed by this plane. Like it's like uh worse than um Allie's I think it's Allie. Allie's leg when uh you know she broke a leg. Like his legs like completely like decayed. Oh, not even close. Has Allie had like a bone sticking out? His leg is like fucking mush. It's like held together by like a piece of gum. Yeah. Like it's barely yeah. it's barely hanging on to him. So you know, everyone's kind of freaking out obviously because uh, you know, uh, they, they see that his legs, like, have been absolutely, like, mangled, and then, um, immediately Misty comes up and just, uh, you know, chops his leg off with an axe, um, and, uh, he, he ends up getting knocked out from this, um, because, you know, I think, you know, just lose it, because he's, like, losing a bunch of blood, too, so I think that kind of made him pass out, um, and, uh, everyone just kind of is, like, completely, like, you know, uh, thinking, like, what the fuck, you know, that Misty instantly knew just to chop this person's leg off uh, with an axe and everything like that. And, you well, know. not what the fuck in a bad way. Like, they're shocked, but, like, um, as we see in the next scene, they're like, 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 wow, Misty's kind of a badass. She's, like, taking charge. Yeah. Uh, I like, too, that, like, even uh, N- Natalie was even shocked about this because, you know, she's, like, the punk walker girl. And, you know, typically in a situation of the punk walker girl or the punk walker, like, person's afraid of this stuff, that really gets over, like, how it's supposed to be, like, a scary situation and all that type of stuff. So, um, you know. Um, and I love yeah. the song that played uh, during that scene. You know, the um, 
I miss you. I want you. Like, it's a really famous song. I, I just can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah. I think it's kind of fucked up, though, that it played, like, right after his freaking leg was cut off. Like, yeah, man, yeah. what a yeah. great way to, you know, play that uh, song. Uh, oh, but this was good. I, I feel bad for the coach, too, because, like, uh, you know, Misty, like, you know, she gets, she's off the plane, she's shell-shocked, and then she's like, oh, shit, coach, where is he? You know, because everyone's trying to, like, find each other. Um, yeah. And then uh, I like how it's, you know, like, she finds him. They all get, they all get you know, the piece of plane off him. And then she, like, takes off. And then we like the focus shifts to like Shauna, Tyson, Van, and Jackie, and then like you see Misty in the background with the axe, but like yeah. the camera isn't focusing on her. Yeah, that was good. You know, good. and and then all of a sudden, I think that does a good job of like uh, the camera trick of like Misty's in the background, like we're not really paying attention to what she's doing. Yeah, that you know, kind of sells like you know putting yourself in their shoes of like you know they're not paying attention to Misty, and all of a sudden she just like you know yeah. This was good, though, because they foreshadowed this in the last episode, because when Allie uh, broke her leg and, like, her bone was showing, the coach seemed like he was, like, the most freaked out about it and everything like that. Like, he, like, was going to throw up there. I made sure to mention that because, uh, let me know, next episode, he gets his freaking leg chopped off and everything like that. So that was, like, yeah. really good foreshadowing. Um, again, you don't catch it at first glance because, uh, you know, you don't know this is going to happen. But then you see, like, oh, they, 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 uh, they set that up very well. So, um, yeah. Did you mention um, Van surviving? I thought that was after this. Or was that before this? Before. Because remember I said, like, um, like they see Van survives, and, like, they're, like, arguing, and then, like, you see Misty in the background with the axe. And oh, that's she true. Goes, uh, so, yeah, uh, like, doing this, uh, Shauna's, like, really haunted, you know, that she she says that it doesn't feel right, that they just left Van uh, to die, but Jack is like, you know... You were going to get yourself killed trying to kill Van. Like, if you could, you know, she's trying to, like, talk him out of it. But I kind of like this, like, because obviously you think this is going to be the end of Van, and you're, like, already kind of setting yourself up. Like, Jackie's going to do, like, this big speech, and you're about to see Jackie's perspective on it. And then we see, like, Van uh, just come up out of nowhere. We see that her face has been burned. We find out that she, like, made it out of there and everything like that. And, like, Van's, like, pissed at, like, Jackie. Um, and, you know... We'll talk about this, but, like, throughout the, like, the rest of the episode, it seems like this is, like, a thing that only, like, these three know about. Like, it doesn't carry over to, like, the group. Like, it, it seems like they're keeping this, like, kind of to themselves and everything like that. Yeah, know? like, like that, well, because, um, this, this, this whole episode only happens over, like, the first day. Um, yeah. Yeah, Van, like, like, is, like, really bitter towards Jackie. And, like, she mentions, like, offhandedly, like, oh, yeah, you left me to die. And Tyus was like, wait, what? Yeah. So, like, it seems like no one else, like, really knows what happened. But uh, I liked it. But, you know, I actually kind of liked this because they could have immediately just gotten, you know, done the choice of having a character get killed off. But I actually think this is more impactful that they had Van survive because now you're having, like, the struggle. Because, uh, like I said, throughout the rest of the episode, uh, Van is just, uh, you know, giving Jackie jabs about how the fact that she left her to die and everything like that. But I kind of like this because, you know, we talk about this a lot. You can kind of see both perspectives. You can see uh, Jackie's perspective, you know, because uh, she I think she saw that Van was kind of unrescuable at that point because she was like trapped. She was like trapped in the sea. Like, I don't from the, the, her point of view, I don't think there was a way that like she was going to be able to like rescue Van in enough time where like Jackie and Shauna were all going to survive. So it was kind of like, you know, she she chose Shauna because it's her best friend and everything like that. And, you know, saw Shauna could get out of there. But obviously, like you said, from Van's point of view, um, Jackie just basically left her to die and really didn't make much of an attempt to try to save her. While Shauna, like, spent... Yeah, like, Shauna was, like, like you know, pulling on the seat, like, trying to get her... Because Van was, like, stuck, like, the seat and, like, come out and, like, you know, pinned her down. Um, and Jackie kind of just, like, stood there and then eventually, like, pulled Shauna away. Yeah, and Shauna so, didn't yeah. even want to leave either. Like, Shauna got pulled out by yeah. Jackie. So it's like, you know. So like again from Van's point of view, like I get why she's not mad at Shauna. Like Shauna really tried to help her. And then Jackie kind of just like stood there and then eventually, you know, ditched her. So like, you know. I, I definitely don't like I don't blame anyone. Like again, you know, it's a really life or death, high stress situation. Yeah. Like I, I understand Jackie and I understand Van. Um and again, no intro still. Uh I think that's a good oh. choice. Even though the show's only in the second episode, I still think we don't really know the characters well enough to really want an intro yet. So it's still just the logo with a song playing in the background. I do you think that do you think we need an intro by now? I thought it was a good choice not to have one yet. I still think it's too soon. No, I, I think like I said, I like the song they used when uh you know like Misty cut off the leg 
and kind of, you know, going to black after that big moment was a smart decision. Um, also, um, again, I'm a, I'm a first per, uh, first time watcher. Owen is caught up to date on the show. Um, so, you know, I could be spewing bullshit out of my asshole here, or I could be on the money or maybe in between. Um, I noticed that, uh, Thaisa, she, uh, when they got off the plane, like we, um, you know, everyone's looking for each other, trying to make sure they're okay. And, uh, Thaisa is like screaming, like, where's Van? Where's Van? Um, and then when Van, you know, shows up alive, Thaisa like hugs her and is like, super happy to see her. And like the rest of the episode, Thaisa and Van are like sticking really close to each other. So, um, you know, and also as obviously, obviously, as we know, in the present day, Thaisa is like married, uh, to a woman. So um, I'm guessing the implication is that, like, Thaisa and Van are either dating or Thaisa, like, is in love with Van. Again, first-time watcher, so that might be completely off the mark, but uh, that's, like, uh, seems to be the implication off of this episode. Yeah, you could, I can understand why you have that feeling. I think I didn't pick up on it because I was, like, you know, still getting used to the characters. Um, I didn't really know, like, Thaisa's wife really yet as a character, so I'm like, is she also in the past, too? Um and again, I think the first two episodes, you had the ability to go back and rewind it. I didn't have that ability. So, like, you know, I probably didn't catch it, you know, because I'm just watching this once, like, full on. So. Uh, shortly, I'll also talk about uh, Natalie and Travis, but, uh, you know, we'll get to that when we get to it. But, uh, this, you know, again, first time viewer, this is me kind of, like, trying to pick up on little things and, uh, like, see what is significant and what isn't. But, yeah, we talked about, like, Misty's, like, survival skills. The next time we see them in the past again, uh, why, don't you, why don't you kind of talk about, like, Misty showing off those great survival skills uh, and everything like that? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Misty is kind of taking charge of the situation. She's directing everyone on what to do. Um, you know, she um, is, like, helping a girl, like, wrap up her arm that's broken. And she's, like, telling, like, hey, you know, like, uh, look for this. Hey, do that. Hey, do this. Um, and, you know, one of the girls even mentions, like, wow, I mean, I, I'll, you know, uh, she asks Misty, like, how do you know how to do all this stuff? And Misty, like, pauses and then says, uh, like, oh, I took the Red Cross uh, babysitter training course twice. Um, again, Misty seems, like, slightly psychotic. So she could be telling the truth here. And, like, yeah, she just, like, took, like, um, basic survival training courses. Or, like, she's bullshitting and, like, she's, like, I don't know. <laughs> She yeah. just, like, has, like, weird-ass, like, serial killer hobbies or something. And she, like, you know, because she seemed like, um, you know, because, like, again, cutting off uh, the coach's leg, it makes, you know, I get that because you need to, like, wrap it and, like, stop the bleeding. Um, but also, she was, like, ready to do that. So it's that weird line of, like, we still aren't sure what's exactly up with Misty. Yeah. And, again, I actually... Like, we just, like kind of, like, good intention, but she's just, like, a little too enthusiastic, or if she is, like, full-on, like, serial killer, she's liking this. I'm also saying, you no, know, the funny thing is, too, like, you talk about this, it could be both kids where Missy did take that course twice, but she's also psychotic, because it's Missy, she's just a weird breed, like, it could be that, too, that she, she took the course twice, and she's just psychotic, you know, so. Right, so, like, Missy, like, is, like, um, we, like, we don't know what her intentions are or, like, what her really, her yeah. nature is right now. Yeah. Makes sense. It's only second episode, so we don't know much, like, about her yet. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Misty is, uh, you know, kind of taking charge. And this is interesting because uh, Jackie is just, like, sitting there, like, helpless, like, frozen shell shock. And this is interesting because last episode we saw... Misty was kind of the outcast on the team. She's not even really on the team. She's, like, the assistant manager. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jackie is the one who kind of brings everyone together, like, gets everyone to get along and, like, gets them moving towards a common goal. You know, here we see Jackie's, like, completely useless and, like, can't really do anything here. Whereas, you know, Misty in this survival situation is, like, taking charge. And I think, like, this episode did, like, a good job of, because, like, out of everyone in the past... Out of the ones that we see, like, in the present and stuff like that, Misty got, like, the least amount of showcase. Like, you know, she wasn't there when they did the team meeting. Um, you know, she didn't really play much on the soccer field. And, uh, you know, when she tried to kind of do stuff like help Allie with her leg situ with her broken leg, like, she was kind of cut off. Like, Misty kind of faded into the background a little bit, like, in the first episode. So here, I feel like, you know, she really needed a showcase because, uh, you know... 
Shano and uh, Jackie and maybe and uh, Taisa kind of a little bit. Even th they still do stuff in this episode, but they kind of take a little bit more of a background role. Like this episode, There's definitely missing something in the episode. Yeah, in the past, anyways. I mean, I guess a little bit in the yeah. present, but more so in the past, it's like a missing. It's a bit more even in the present. In the present, I'd say it's more uh, Natalie and um, Shauna. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Um, in. Um, okay. So yeah. Pretty, pretty much, Misty is getting everyone to like get together. Um, people are looking for their like luggage and like you know um, other missing people. Um, yeah. We see Natalie is uh you know also oh well I guess before that. Uh, Sean and Natalie are, are speaking as like Sean is doing something and um, you know the van is like giving her uh, Jackie a side eye and is like obviously really pissed off and um, Sean is like hey I mean, can you really blame her um, and Jackie is like um, like a little offended well she like tries to defend herself a bit and like tells Shauna like hey I was trying to like help you yeah. and Shauna kind of just like doesn't really say anything to that she just seems she just like she kind of like shrugs it off like, um, like she, like, she doesn't seem mad at Jackie, but she definitely, like, like, isn't defending Jackie either. Like, she, uh, doesn't, it seems like she doesn't agree with Jackie, like, pulling Shauna away and leaving Van. Yeah, and I can understand that, you know. Um, yeah, again, but, like, as Jackie said, dude, I tried to fucking save your life. Yeah, so, uh, and, you know, this kind of makes you, uh, hate Shauna in the past, well, because, you know, she just slept, she just recently slept with, uh, Jeff. And, uh, oh, he's a horrible friend. Yeah, you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, when everyone's looking... I'm like, do you even like Jackie? It seems like you don't even like Jackie. Yeah. We should also mention, too, like, in the past, while everyone's looking for the luggage, because this isn't super important, but this becomes, like, a bigger thing later on, we see Lottie is, like, freaking out because she's trying to find her uh, medication. Because, uh, obviously, she needs to be medicated. We don't really know why she needs to be medicated yet, but we know she's on some type of medication. And, you know, she's obviously worried about that because, uh, you know, she need, basically needs her medication. Who She doesn't know how long she's going to necessarily be out there. Um, I think later on she ends up, like, finding her medication. Um, and I, but I don't think it's, like, enough where, like, she'll be... Well, it's going to, you know... Because, obviously, we find out throughout their 19 months. It's not enough. I mean, obviously, they don't know that. I'm just talking as if we know. Right, yeah, but like we like going off what we know of the present storyline. We know they're going to be out there for 19 months because yeah. you know later on they're around the campfire and they're like, "Oh, hey, don't worry, guys. They'll like get us by tomorrow." And then you know we're sitting here like, "Ah, no, you're going to be here for a while. You're going to be here for a year and a half." Let me find out why later on. Um, so yeah, um, um, yeah. So um, you know, pretty much everyone's like, you know, trying to. So, like, you know, everyone is kind of, like, not calmed down, but they're, like, Misty has got them all, like, working together. Like, they're not all, like, freaking out to the point that they were. Yeah. You know, they're not running around like a bunch of hellish chickens, basically. Um, um, we I see uh, Natalie go over to uh, Travis, who was uh, one of the coach's sons. You know, well, we met him that, briefly at the end of the episode. Before that, unless it was after this, we uh, the, the other coach wakes up, um, and uh, he's, like, out of it and all that type of stuff and uh you know he's like proud of the girls that he got like the thin off of them. yeah i was gonna bring that up after but yeah I, yeah I you think, can talk about it yeah i thought this was before that so i just figured we talk about it now um i mean maybe yeah. but uh yeah uh he doesn't know that his leg's been cut off um you know he's like numb to it and everything like that which makes sense because like he was like knocked out like right when his leg got cut off so he probably just thought like like the thing like crushed his leg so he's like asking how his leg is and missy's just about to tell him like that she's cut his leg off and thais is just like yeah your leg you're gonna be fine but doesn't really lie to him and stuff and thais has to kind of like pull misty aside and be like you know um y you know i don't think this is now the type of time to tell him because you know they're still stranded out here and you know who knows because if you think about it, how would you react if, like, your leg got cut off? And then, you know, Taisi even brings up, like, are you going to bring it to the fact that you're the one that cut it off with the axe? And she, I think Taisi even mentions, like, and you did it immediately, like, without any, like, hesitation or anything like that. So you can understand yeah. this makes Misty kind of realize, like, you know, uh, yeah, we should just keep this quiet for a little bit. And, you know. The thing is, I don't think Misty, I don't think Misty ever really agrees with it because later on she just, like, 
Because later that night, remember, this all happens over one day. Yeah, yeah. So she, cool. like, Misty, I don't think ever really agrees with Taisa because she, like, fucking tells him, like, a couple hours after this. Um, but I think, you know. But, yeah, Misty was, like, we got, uh, to be fair to Misty, like, I don't blame her, like, here. Because she, her first response when Taisa pulls her aside is, like, well, we have to tell him. Yeah. And it's, like, yeah, it's kind of, like, I mean, obviously, it's a really fucking shitty thing to do. But, like, what are you going to do? Like, lie to him for, like, however long? And, like, what if he ends up finding out on his own? Like, I feel like it would be better to, like, sit him down. Be yeah. like, all right, calm down. Look, you were really injured and we had to, like, save your life, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh... But also, like you said, Misty was, like, really eager. She was, like, about to be like, oh, yeah, I cut your leg off. And yeah. as we see later on, Misty was just fucking, like, sitting there, licking her lips, ready to fucking tell this guy he's, um, you know, he, her leg came off. So there's, like, a middle ground between lying to him and, like, telling him, like, oh, yeah, we fucked up your leg. <laughs> you know? I feel like, you know, there's, yeah, there was a middle ground where we could have, like, you know, restrained him, calmly told him, like, hey, you were really injured. We had to, like, save your life. <laughs> right. Uh, I think this all, co- this tra- this uh, correlates with uh, the present, though, because you see Missy ends up becoming a nurse, and she's, you know... She's really messed up in, like, the present and everything like that. Not really good to the patient. So I thought this was kind of good, like, yeah. you know, that this, that this is something that sticks into the present and everything like that. Um, yeah. So then later on... Uh, well, it's interesting, because, like, here, like, again, you can kind of, like, justify Misty and, like, yeah, she's a little e- too eager to do it, but she's, like, trying to keep this guy alive, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, kind of like, you know... Like, yeah, we have to do this, you know, to keep him alive. Like, I don't really give a shit if you're, like, don't think it's pleasant. Um, but, think, you know, uh, we see in the future, she, like, does, she doesn't give uh, morphine to the old person just because she's an asshole. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely so, agree with you, though. I, I think uh, had Misty not been eager to, like, tell him, like, I cut your leg off, I think Thaisa wouldn't have, like, stopped it. Like, I think if Thaisa, if Misty was, like... Um, you know, a little bit more sincere about it and everything like that, like, it would have been, like, a completely yeah. different thing. Yeah, because uh, I think we both mentioned, like, um, Misty seems, like, the most chill about what happened, like, all the trauma. Like, everyone else is fucking traumatized, and Misty is, like, just do-do-do-do-do. Yeah. Um, although I will say, like, it seems like past Misty is a little more well-adjusted than present Misty, because, like I said, you could at least kind of justify past Misty, like, doing fucked up things for a greater good. Or as I said, in the present, she literally just, like, fucks over an old lady because she's, like, being kind of an asshole. Yeah, I agree. For, like, no reason. So, present Misty is, like, even more unhinged than uh, past Misty. So, yeah, why don't we talk about a uh, nice little conversation that, uh, well, it's not a nice conversation, but, uh, you know, it, it's a conversation that Natalie and Travis have. So. It is certainly a conversation, you are correct. <laughs> it's not a nice uh, one, though. Yeah, so uh, Travis's little brother, I don't remember his name, keeps going into the plane Bobby, and like Bobby. uh Javi keeps go like trying to go into the plane and look for his dad. Uh cause, you know, Javi's like the youngest one here. He's he's only like uh you know like ten maybe. Um and uh, you know like the girls have to keep stopping him and uh Natalie comes over to Travis who's just like you know kinda like Jackie sitting off to the, to the side like shell shocked. He's just like by himself, like staring off into the distance. And Natalie's like, hey, um, you know, you should like tell your brother, like, you know, like, calm him down, like, say something to him. And Travis is, um, he says that, like, you know, I saw my dad, um, like, get flung out of the plane. Uh, you know, he was trying to help you idiots. And he basically says, like, fuck my brother, fuck you guys. Um, which, like, yeah, is messed up. But also, like, again, they just had a very traumatic thing. And as far as Travis knows, his dad just died. So, like, yeah, he's not being a good brother, but at the same time, I can't really blame him for just being like, fuck everyone, I just, like, want to be by myself. Yeah, if my dad just, like, died in a gruesome way like that, um, you know, yeah. I would feel this way. I think, too, he's, like, blaming them, too, because obviously he his dad was trying to save them, so his dad basically died yeah. saving them. So, like, even though it's like, irrational, like, again, like, you know, when you're, like, in this traumatic experience, I don't blame Travis as like just you know his default like coping thing is to blame um you know the girls for what happened to his dad yeah I agree. um and again like you know if he did go to javi and like calm him down like what is he supposed to say like our dad isn't in there i got i saw him get 
flung out of the plane when we were a thousand feet up. Yeah, I don't know you what know? he says, yeah. yeah. Um, like, so, like, yeah, I don't really blame Travis for, like, not wanting to go calm his brother down either. Yeah. And he basically tells Natalie, like, go fuck yourself and, like, walks off. Yeah. Uh, so then, now uh, the next scene, uh, everyone, like, really reunites with their luggage. Uh, Lala has, like, a stuffed animal that, like, she was, uh, you know, that she cherishes and everything like that, and she's, like, reunited with it, and, uh, you know, it's a really sweet moment, but it last long, um, a thin of blood trickles down, and, uh, when, uh, Lola looks up, we see that there's, uh, you know, a body in a tree, and we don't exactly know whose body it is, uh, and I really like this, because we actually get to see it, and we find out that it's the coach, and we find out that he's been, like, stabbed, like, he fell into this tree, and he's, and, uh, he's been, like, stabbed, uh, he has like a, um, like a stick, like, uh, driven into his head and everything. Yeah, like a tree branch. Like he got impaled on the tree, basically, on the top of the tree. Yeah. So yeah, you can see, I, I, I know they show him like die. Cause I'll just tell you like my perspective about this. Cause I remember I kept saying to myself, why are Travis and Harvey there? Even though you could say, well, oh, and you should have seen the coach die, but because he, his, he's been, his face was impaled by a, you know, a branch. I didn't even know that it was the same guy because you can't you can't see his face or anything like that. Yeah. So. Okay, well, his face wasn't impaled. I think they got he was impaled in like the gut. Yeah. And his like face was super bloody and swollen. Yeah. Because so um, I, I'm pretty sure he was already dead. But all the girls are like unsure. Like they like you know we're like should we throw rocks at him? Like and we're like, yeah. you know like we don't know if he's like alive. Like like what should we do? Um, I don't we don't we don't see him like move at all. So I'm pretty sure he was already dead. Yeah, um, I like this though, cause like, you know, they didn't know, but like we got we we could see it, like the audience and stuff. So it was kind of cool that like you know they're trying to figure it out, cause you know from their perspective, how could they know? You know, he could just be like knocked out or whatever too. They can't see like his face or anything like that. Uh, so they're all trying to like figure out like what to do about this and. Uh, Travis yeah, we we got a bit of comedy because you know they're like, should we like throw rocks at him? And then someone mentions like we should throw a shoe at him, and it's like, like what the fuck? <laughs> what if he's alive? Uh, I liked it because Jackie came up with the idea to throw rocks at him, um, which I think was funny because, like, Jackie, like, does not know what to do in this situation, so everything that she suggests is just one. Um, and then, uh, you know, immediately Travis comes over, and he goes, he just cl- immediately starts uh, climbing the tree, and, uh, you know, he said that he sees that uh, his dad, you know, is in pretty bad shape. He's obviously not alive. Uh, this was pretty believable that Travis was able to quickly climb this tree because I can imagine your, your your adrenaline's pumping and everything like that. I, I think you know sometimes when your adrenaline pumps, it makes you do things that you would typically would normally be able to do and all that. Type like of in stuff. that situation, like you know, again, they don't know what's up with his dad. He could be alive. So like, yeah, I could see him just being like, like not even thinking about falling off the tree and getting hurt. He's just like, fuck it, that's my dad. I gotta go find him. Yeah. Because uh, again, like everyone's like discussing like what to do, and I think Misty is like trying to like come up with a plan. And then Travis, like, comes in, like, after everyone else. And he's like, oh, my God, Dad. And then he immediately, like, ignores everyone else and starts climbing up the tree. And then Misty has to quickly be like, oh, quick, everyone, like, uh, tie, like, you know, sheets together. So, like, if he falls, we can catch him. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and then uh, the branch breaks. And, uh, like, well, the... I was just going to say, I like that because it's in character for Trevor, or Travis, because he, like, wasn't cooperating with everyone earlier. Yeah. So again, like him, like you said, he's like the panic of the situation. He's not even thinking, but also like, yeah, he's like not really a team player. He's like, fuck my dad. I don't like ignore. Fuck what everyone else is doing. I'm gonna I go agree. like just you know do my own thing. So yeah, the branch breaks, and uh, you know his Travis's uh, the coach's dead body like falls to the ground, and like Travis kind of has to like cope with it, which I really liked it because like. You know, he was, like, just about to go over to his dad, and I thought, you know, it was very sympathetic because he didn't really get to have, like, closure with his dad, like, before he died, and he still kind of didn't even know he was dead because the branch broke, so I thought that was kind of symbolic about that, but he felt like he didn't really have to get to have closure with, like, his dad before he died, so, like, wait, he was about yeah, to, like, he, like, just up to the top. like, he just reached his dad, and then the, you know, branch broke, and he fell down, yeah. Uh, and uh, we get a lot of, like, Travis, like, you know, because the branch fell, and Travis almost fell with it. So we, tr- we see Travis, like, hugging onto the tree for dear life, and he's, like, you know, actor did a great job. Like, you see his, like, pained expression, yeah. And, you know, Harvey wasn't also, around. Um, Harvey wasn't here for this scene, so he still uh, doesn't even know that yeah, he's he dead. I was about uh, to say, Harvey was on the ground, and he's, like, crying, and, like, one of the girls hugs him. Oh, I think it was Shawnee. You're right, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I say that because uh, yeah, so man, Javi, Javi was like hoping that his dad was like around and was like looking for him, but now he knows his dad's dead. Okay, you know why I forgot about this? Because later on, uh, they have like a conversation about it where like. You know, this isn't a big spoiler, but, like, Travis, like, lashes out on him later on, so I, I thought, like, uh, he didn't, you know, that's why, so that conversation made me think, like, he didn't know and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. But, yeah, then later on in the night, everybody, uh, Natalie sets up, like, a fire. It kind of makes sense that Natalie knows how to set up the fire, because she probably does this a lot, you know, uh, with her rebellious phase. She's probably had, like, a lot of fires out in the woods and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, you know... Um, I also like that because Misty isn't doing everything like something like you like you said Natalie's contributing. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, um, we had some like every, some people uh, have some nice little uh, confessions that they make. You know, we get to find out a little bit about them as characters and everything like that. Because Law is really upset. Uh, when you talk about why Law is so upset. <laughs> yeah. Well, also I had a question for you because um, in this episode it seemed like more people survived the crash. But then when we get to the campfire scene, like, it seems like it's only, like, the characters we're already introduced to um, have survived. So, like, are there other, like, did, like, other girls, like, survive? Or, like, is it, like, just, like, the, you know, eight-ish people we already saw? Um, there will be, um, like, more survivors, uh, but it's, like... Okay, well, then, I guess uh, a complaint I had was, like, you know, it seems weird that, like, only the characters we've already been introduced to are, like, sitting around the campfire. Yeah. Um, because, you know, like, again, like, going earlier in this episode, it seemed like quite a few people were, like, off the plane and, like, searching for stuff. Like, you know, like, background characters. And then, you know, uh, later in the episode, it's like, whoa, what happened? It seems like there's only, like, eight people that, like, survived. Um, yeah, there's a big... This yeah, is so, a, yeah, this is also, like, a big... Yeah, like, so I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, like, this episode was, like, really ambiguous on, like, you know, like, how many people were, like, on the plane, how many people got off the plane. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's just, like, I, I was unclear on, like, exactly how many people died, how many people lived. Yeah, I, I'm so kind of a little bit um, ambiguous when it comes to that, because, like, you know, it seemed like, too, like, some people that were, like, on this, pl like, in this episode, they weren't in the pilot, like, there was one person that showed up, that I'm like, where the hell were you in the pilot? You were not there. Like, where the hell were you? Um, well, I think that's fine, because, again, yeah, we only focused on, like, a few characters, and, like, it's a big plane, so I assume, like, you know, there was a lot of people on the plane. Yeah. But that's why I said at the campfire, it's, like, only the main characters sitting around the campfire. So I was like, what happened? Aren't there, like, other people, like, yeah, on the plane? Yeah, uh... They should have, like, shown more of them. It seemed like they just wanted to focus, like, on those characters. So that's why they did that. Right. I, I, I think, again, just having some extras, like, in the background would have kind of uh, helped. I agree. Because, again, going off of the last scene of, in the past, it seemed like only, like, eight people survived. Um, but, yeah, so, um, like you said, Campfire, um, uh, Laura, no, no, is that her name? The yeah. religious girl? Yeah, yeah. She uh, needs to cry and... Um, you know, people ask her, like, what's wrong? What happened? Um, and then she says, like, it's it's my fault that this happened. Everyone's like, what do you mean? Why is it your fault? And then she says uh, that, like, you know, God um, is punishing her because she had a piano lesson last week. And in her brain, she called her teacher a cunt. Yeah. And then now they're all, you know, been stranded. And um, th this was what everyone needed to hear because everyone just burst out laughing. Uh, and like earlier, like like even at the campfire, Van was still eyeing the shit out of Jackie, and like <laughs> clearly was still pissed at her. But um, and I think she's still pissed at her. But like you know, everyone has been like such having the worst fucking day of their life. So having Laura like blame herself for this over calling her teacher a cunt in her mind, like you know that gets everyone to just start laughing and kind of like lightens the mood. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like gallows humor. Humor, I think, like kind of just like. You know, it gets so bad that you kind of just laugh at the situation. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, um, an example I can think of is, like, you know, when I worked with oh, Uncle Landscape and, like, when... the I mean, I know this is, like, when, like, when, when it's, like, really hot, like, 90 degrees outside, we're just suffering. Sometimes, like, you know, someone would say something... You need to, like, hear something, like, stupid, like, really funny to kind of get you through it and all that type of stuff. So yeah, 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 exactly. 
Um, so yeah, Laura kind of like uh, saying that and it's also good for her because when everyone starts laughing, like she ends up like laughing too. Like she ends up realizing like, oh, okay, this isn't a big deal. So everyone's um, kind of like, you know, doing like little confessions, like funny ones. I, li- I like this scene because it didn't, only like three people did confessions. Like it didn't like overstay its welcome. I feel like if everyone did one, I thought it would have like overstayed its welcome. So I like that it was only like three people. But then it gets like real serious real quick because then Jackie, you know, obviously joking around like, so what about you, uh, Shauna? Do you have any, uh, but she calls her by her last name, Shipman. So she's like, what about you, Shipman? Do you have anything you want to confess about? And like Shauna gets like this look on her face. Um, and you know, she, uh, you know, obviously because we know what the confession is. So I like how it's like the the scene, like it, it turned a funny scene, like and it gets serious, like very quickly and all that type of stuff. Like, you know. Yeah. Well, um, Jackie says something like, got it, what about you, Shipman, any, like, secrets that could crash a plane? And so, yeah, like, Shauna's, like, is a bit more serious, because, um, one girl says, like, um, like, she, like, shoplifts from, um, I think TJ Maxx, yep. and then returns them, so she's got, like, a shit ton of TJ Maxx points, because yep. she just, like, shoplifts and then returns them no idea uh, for how she store got credit. No, I have no idea how she got away with that, but she did. And, well, I mean, this was 1996. I, I, they probably didn't have, like, um, scanners like they do now. I guess, yeah. Um, and then uh, Jackie, I thought, was pretty funny. Because um, uh, she says, like, she uh, when her parents were asleep, she would uh, go down to the living room and, like, rewind a Bruce Willis movie that, like, showed his dick. And then, um, well, her saying this was also, like, what got Sean to stop laughing was because um, she says, like, look, Jeff, Jeff ain't bad, but come on, Bruce Willis is Bruce Willis. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously, because she made a joke about Jeff's dick, Sean is like, uh, uh you know, And, you awkward. know, you can make the argument, even though this is meant to funny scene, like, you know, maybe Sean is thinking, like, J- Jack is not being appreciative, in Sean's head anyways, of Jeff and all that type of stuff, you know, appreciation what she has and everything like that, so. Um, yeah, but I, I do think also, like, she just feels guilty because, like, you know, her saying that, Makes her remember, like, oh yeah, I know, I I, I fucked Jeff <laughs> behind Je- Sean's uh, behind Jackie's back, and but then, also uh, like I am curious about when this will come out because like I mean you know they've only gone out there for one day, so um like obviously but like you know if this is revealed like at when they've been out there for like six months, Sean is like I fucked your boyfriend, I would be like, dude, we're like out in the fucking woods trying to survive, like who gives a fuck? <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, so, so like, you know, hopefully, you know, as a first time viewer, I'm hoping this isn't like dragged out too long because, again, you know, 19 months they're out there. So at a certain point, um, you know, we find out later on Misty's fucking like eating people to survive. Um, so, you know, at, at a certain point, you know, fucking your boyfriend isn't as uh, big a deal. Yeah, I would say like, uh, you know, I would give it maybe like, uh, you know, maybe it- I feel like they can't be out there, like, too long. Like, they can't, like, completely derive into, like, the cannibalism and stuff. Um, maybe, like, I maybe, like, a couple months, maybe, like, a couple months or something like that. Maybe a month or so. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like, again, like, they're only out there for a day, so if Shauna came clean, like, yeah, that would be a big deal. Um, but again, like, you know, if they're, I, I'm just hoping they don't wait too long, because, like you said, if they're out there for, like, months and they're having to do, like, horrible shit to survive, uh, Shauna's secret doesn't come off as much of a, you know, like, a, a big deal. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, because it seems like it's still, like, even though the plane crash seems like it's messing with her, it seems like that kind of is still, because, you know, she ends up marrying him in the present, so it seems like it's still kind of fucking her up a little bit in the present. It would be kind of weird to, like, you know, if it came out later on, like, in the past, and it wasn't a big deal, um, and then it's, but it's messing her up in the present. Like, you could still feel guilt, but I feel like it needs to, like, it really needs to carry, like, weight when when it gets revealed like in the past and everything like that to kind of yeah make the I'm ho- what I'm hoping is that, like Shauna reveals it in like the next you know three episodes and then that causes Jackie to like not trust Shauna and then that leads to like other bad stuff happening you know yeah um, but like the stuff with Jeff I feel like should not be like the bad thing but rather like the thing that kind of leads to a snowball effect I agree I agree um, um, yeah. But, uh, you know, again, for now, they've only about, haven't been out here that long, so it's fine. So, um, like, again, as I said, them only being out for, here for a day makes, you know, the, the Jeff thing still a big deal. But um, I have a complaint because what happens next, or, well, not next, but um, 
what happens with Misty at the very end. Um, I have a complaint with because they've only been out here for one day. Sure, but I'll talk about the Misty. Thing. Yeah, do you want to talk about the um, Misty scene with the coach? Yeah, and uh, I'm talking about the end of the, this is the end of the episode too, but like the end of the past. Uh, so I'm talking about all this stuff. So yeah, Misty uh, doing all of this. We see she's doing something by like the fire and everything like that. Um, and uh, you know, um, she goes over to the coach. Um, and um, you know, earlier in the episode too, I forgot to mention. You know, uh, they had to stop the bleeding from for for them too. So like they uh they had like a little bit of like rubbing alcohol and everything like that. Um. To, like, really stop the bleeding and everything like that. So, uh, then she goes over. She's, like, uh, she's, uh, like, heated up uh, a stick, uh, slash branch. Um, and she, like, presses it, like, against, uh, the coach's, what, uh, what would it be? Like, the thing that, because his leg's cut off. I was going to say his leg, but it's not his leg because it's gone. But, like, like the artery that would have connected, like, his leg, like, th that's not there anymore, so. Um, yeah, so basically, she's gonna Misty's gonna cauterize the wound, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um. So she so she does that. He's like screaming in pain and everything. Which, like if that. you don't know, like, like that is a real thing. Where like if you uh, you know, like to prevent you from like bleeding out yeah. from a big wound, like you uh burn it shut essentially. Yeah. Um. um but you know, typically, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna do you're gonna use anesthetic. <laughs> you know, you're gonna knock someone out. But you know, they don't really have access to that, so. Um, yeah. Well, also, well, Misty fucking wakes him up, and then does it. I'm like, you know, you should have just done that shit when he was unconscious. I agree, uh, but you know, then uh, you know, Misty actually tells him that like his leg's been cut off and everything like that, and he kind of starts like freaking out and everything like that. Um, and then uh, everyone kind of comes over and like, you know, is upset with Misty that like she kind of told him about it um, and everything like that, and uh, you know. Um, Missy then says, like, you know, hey, I was just cauterizing his leg so that he wouldn't bleed out and all that type of stuff. So, uh, you know. Well, um, everyone's surprised, but again, I don't think everyone's really, like, upset with Missy. Because, well, again, they, um, they got over, they heard the coaches scream from when, when Missy cauterizing the wound. And then they rushed over, and then, you know, the coach got knocked out from the pain. And then Missy said, like, I had to take care of this for good, like, he was going to bleed out. Yeah. Um, so, like, again, I don't think anyone was really upset with Missy. Because they didn't hear her, like, tell him and then do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, And later on, we we hear two girls, like, talking, and they're like, man, thank God Misty's out here, you know? Yeah. So I, um, I don't think anyone's, like, everyone's surprised that Misty did that, but um, I don't, Misty, uh, Misty, I, I said Misty. Um, everyone's surprised that Misty did that, but I don't think anyone's really upset with Misty. I agree. So then, um, the end of the episode... Um, everyone's sleeping, Misty wakes up, and she just kind of, uh, starts walking around and everything like that, and she overhears, um, you know, a couple of the people talking about, like, basically, like, saying, like, hey, we wouldn't, you know, if it wasn't for Misty, we would all be screwed out here, like, basically, Misty is the one that's kind of, like, helping us survive and everything like that, and, um, you know... Misty's starting to actually, like, kind of feel like she has, like, a purpose. Like, she can finally contribute something to the team and everything like that. You know, before, she was just kind of a background character. She couldn't really do much on the soccer team and everything like that. So, earlier in the episode, they mentioned uh, that there's a uh, transmitter that goes off, um, you know, when the plane crashes. It sends out, like, a signal, so that way someone will come, like, rescue them and everything like that. Which I'm glad they mentioned, like, earlier in the episode, like, they didn't just, like, show it, and we weren't always supposed to know what it is, and they mentioned, like, early enough where, like, you know, we would, like, you know, it wasn't just a throwaway scene. Because, but, uh, like, when they were on the campfire, they were all kind of just, like, um, you know, they're trying to keep calm and be like, hey, guys, you know, these things have transmitters, like, they'll be here to rescue us by tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, which we know wasn't going to happen. Uh, so we, you know, uh, I like it wasn't, like, a complete throwaway line, but they, you know... It wasn't, like, a force that it was in there, too. Like, they, they put it in there so that way, like, the audience would know about it. Because, you know, I assume, like, audiences don't, like, know a lot about planes and all that type of stuff. So, uh, you know, Misty goes over to the uh, transmitter. She finds it, like, laying in the ground and all that type of stuff. And Misty, you know, uh, starts to kind of think. She's kind of, you know, thinking about all the pain that she's felt. And, you know, thinking about, like, uh, how much she's felt like she has a purpose so she starts uh smashing the transmitter like against a branch 
and against like a log and all that type of stuff but it, it obviously doesn't smash because it's it's big it's um and everything like that so then uh she goes in and like completely she like tears off the wire and everything like that so because she did because she did this now the transmitter is not going to go off so there's really no way that they can really be rescued now now they're pretty much like screwed um and uh i actually really like this scene you know uh this really made missy uh you know come off like a psycho and everything like that and you know now it kind of makes us like be like Wow, Missy's really helping them out, but it's like, wow, Missy just like really fucked them over. Missy's like, doing them all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, I actually, uh, where we differ here, I did not like this scene. I thought, um, you know, again, this episode did a good job, like you said, showing that like Misty felt like undervalued and like didn't belong back in regular society. But here she's like the new Jackie where she's taking charge, everyone's depending on her. Um, and as you said, they set up the uh, plane transmitter uh, well into the episode. Um, but one, um, I find it weird that Misty was the only one who was awake at this time. I find it weird that she went to go take a piss in like at this exact spot where the transmitter That's was. Fair. That's fair. Um, you know, and we saw earlier everyone was like looking for their luggage, looking for survivors. We see like this is still like with an eye shot of the camp, and um, the transmitter is like blinking and beeping. So, like, I feel like someone would have found this um, earlier. But even if they didn't, what are the odds that Misty is the one who found it? The one person who would fucking destroy this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, like, even though Misty's psychotic, like, this is a little too psychotic. Like, again, as I said earlier, Jeff, like, Shauna and Jeff's thing is still a big deal because they've only been out here for a day. Um... So, like, you know, obviously if Shauna came clean now, it'd still be a big deal. But um, with Misty, her feeling valued, I feel like would like she would have more... That'd be, come off as, like, a better motivation if they had been out here for a while, maybe, like, a month or two. Yeah. And she's like... But, like, um, they've only been here out here for a day. And, um, and I'm like, Misty, like, what do you think is going to happen? You're all going to stay out here forever? That's um, fair. Um, I think I like this, though, just because I think Missy's thinking, you know, obviously in the moment, it's just psychotic. You know, once uh, once we go back, I feel like I'm not going to feel like it's valued, you know. Like, she's probably thinking, you know, I actually get feel this uh, value. And again, I'm also thinking, too, there's probably I, like... I, I get that. Um, I also think um, you know, there's probably like a time limit where this thing has to go off, you know. So they try I think they were trying to keep that realistic because, you know... Um, I don't know if it's I don't know exactly how long it is that this transmitter goes off because they're mentioned in this transmitter so like uh and you know I don't know like if it if it goes off like you know within a few hours after the plane was supposed to have landed and everything like that so I don't know if they were trying to like logistically think okay like we have a certain amount of time we have to make sure the transmitter gets destroyed and everything like that I don't know if there's logistics when it comes down to that. But I don't mind really mind and, the fact that it was Misty because, like, at least Misty's kind of psychotic anyways. Like, at least, like, you know, they show that she kind of was psychotic. At least she wasn't, like, a completely normal and then did it. Like, at least she was, like, somewhat psychotic. Um, so, you know, I think I could kind of overlook all of this stuff just because, like, you know. And we also see Misty in the present. So I'm actually cool with this just because, like, um, you know, uh, I think it gets over, like, yeah. uh, Misty's psychoticness and everything. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Misty's fucking bonkers, but um, yeah, like I said, it's just like a, I, I can believe Misty, um, like you know, having more of a purpose out here than in like regular society. Um, if you know, we they had been out here for a little while, yeah. um, and then like you said, the issue is the transmitter, and to that I say I feel like they would already like like rescue would already have their general location because t planes typically have like a like, a general, like, you know, route that they take. Right. I, I know it's a private plane, but still, like, um, you know, when the plane didn't arrive at the airport, um, I feel like they already would have been looking for the transmitter. Uh, you know, because they've been out here for, like, a, you know, like, like pretty much the whole day, right? Like, it's, like, it's, um, it's, like, daytime when they, um, yeah. when they crash, and then like the middle of the night when Missy destroys the transmitter. Um, so I feel like, you know, like, you know the 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 plane is super late. I feel like, and um, they would have like a general idea of where they crashed. Um, 
And that's, I feel like that's typically why, like, plane crash stories, like, or, like, survival stories, you have to have, like, um, like, like a kind of extra explanation of why. Um, but, like, you know, that's typically why, like, for, like, survival stories, it'll be, like, someone sabotaged, like, the ship crashing or the plane crashing or whatever. Um, because you kind of need to have that to happen because, like, there's just too many things in place that would, like, you know, have you be rescued. Um... And also, um, Misty, like, fucking demolishes this thing with a, a fucking huge rock. Yeah. And um, yeah. she's within eyeshot of everyone. And everyone, when the coach screamed when she cauterized the wound, everyone, like, came rushing over. I feel like, you know, they would have heard Misty, like, <laughs> beating this thing with a rock. Yeah, so, that, um, yeah, because it's not like it's a small thing either. It's a big, it's a big device, so. Um, so. You know, again, I can take a bit of, like, stretching um, logic in order to, like, make the premise happen. Like, uh, okay, you know, rescue didn't come, you know, with the transmitter for the last couple hours. Okay, I can buy that. Um, You know, Misty being so psychotic that she wants to stay out here forever after only a day. Stretching it, but, like, Misty is fucking crazy, so I guess. But then you also have, like, everyone would have heard Misty destroying it. And, like, what are the odds Misty was the one person to find it? I'm like, all right, you're losing me a bit. I feel like this is too many coincidences in in one spot. You That's know? fail. That's fail. Uh, I can kind of agree with some of that stuff. I think I just like the scene, you know, because, like, I like that someone, you know, sabotaged them getting rescued. Yeah. Um, that made it, like, a bit more intriguing. And, I, you know, I feel like Misty... I like that Misty fucked everyone over. I like that. Because, you know, last episode set her up as really creepy and crazy. And then this episode did a pretty good job being like, oh, Misty's actually, like, helping. Maybe we had her wrong. Maybe she actually is, like, a good person. Or, like, not a good person, but, like, she's, like, well-intentioned. Because, uh, you know, the, the beginning of this episode, we have the flashback where we see, like, she's getting picked on. And then she, um... So we're like, oh, you know, maybe we had the, maybe we had the wrong idea about Misty. Maybe she's right. just, like, misunderstood. And people are, like, too harsh on her. But then it's like, nope, no, she's crazy. So I, I like that. We have, like, the bait and switch of, like, She's crazy. No, she's not that bad. Nope, she's actually crazy. And I think this adds a um, lot of, like, uh, you know, intrigue in the present, you know, because uh, I was thinking, like, do they actually know that she sabotaged it? Does, do they never find out about it? Because it seems like in the present they never, like, know. But, like... Um, yeah, we, we don't know exactly what the people in the present have knowledge of. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, I like it. I just feel like, you know, you have to you have to rewrite a couple things in order to, like, make it flow better. Yeah, I definitely think maybe they could have had. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Maybe they could have had the transmitter like, you know, a little further away, um, and then maybe like, uh, you know, a couple of people like should have been awake, I guess, and type that type of stuff. Um, yeah, maybe, or like, like you know, they could I don't have, know. Maybe, maybe, maybe like it's maybe if it was already destroyed, like it was already like beyond repair, like it's fucked from the crash, and then Misty like hides it, and like she keeps the truth from everyone that like it's um that's broken i don't know or, like, um, I, I feel like it I, yeah. I feel like misty needs to sabotage it though like it has to be it has to be all yeah misty. Yeah. yeah i like misty sabotaging it but again it's just like it's really it's like such a coincidence yeah so i don't know you, you i'm sure you could write rewrite it better but uh yeah I, I i like the idea but the execution could use some work yeah i guess it could use some work um but yeah, that's everything in the past. Overall, I thought everything in the past was uh, great stuff. Uh, especially yeah, cool. um, everything in the present was pretty good. Uh, you know, um, yeah, uh, since I did a lot of talking about the past, uh, you want to kind of talk about, take us through uh, everything, in the pre- everything in the present. I have it like in order, but you don't have to talk about it in that order. Whatever, like you want to just talk about like first is fine. Um, so... So um, we get more of Shauna's, like, kind of, like, shitty day-to-day life. Um, so we see that, um, um, I, I guess we'll see, I'll start off with the Fender Bender. Um, so Shauna is, um, you know, out in her car, and she's uh, running errands. She calls on her daughter, who's at home, and um, asks her to, like, you know, get the meat out for dinner so it can, like, de And her daughter is a real fucking ass. So, like, last episode, she just seemed like a typical teenage girl. Here she just comes off as, like, a bitch. <laughs> Um, you yeah. know, but like, it, like within reason, like you know, yeah, she is just kind of like a bitchy teenage girl. Um, 
because she's like, yeah, sure, well, whatever, mom, I'll like take the food out. Um, um, and she's just like being like a sassy to her mom. And um, we find out later that she didn't <laughs> take the food out. Um, so like she was just like wasn't even listening to her mom at all. He was like, yeah, sure, whatever, I'll, I'll do it. Um, and then um, as she's talking with her daughter um, on the phone, she uh, uh, gets into a fender bender with the guy in front of her. Um, Shauna gets out and she's acting like a real Karen. Like, um, the, uh, you know, she's like, you know, you, you suck at driving, like, you stopped right away. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And then great. the guy is like, you know, you ran into me. Um, and the guy, like, starts pretty much immediately hitting on her. Like, um, you know, he's like, you know, most people would start off with, oh, I'm sorry for hitting you. Um, I like, I like this guy. His name is, uh, Adam because he's, like, mentioned in a bunch of other shit. Like, uh, you know, when, when, uh, Sean is being, like, a Karen to him. Uh, she like calls him an asshole, and I like that he's just like, "Wow, you, people don't usually figure that out the first time they meet me." So like, he, he yeah, I like knows... that. This, this guy's pretty charming, yeah. Yeah. Um. And then um, um, he says like, you know, you hit me, you know, and then she's like, "Fuck." <laughs> um. And then you know, she just tries to like, um, he tells her like, "Don't worry, we won't get the insurance involved. Like, give me your phone number. Or I'll, I'll, I know a good auto shop." Yeah. Um, he, like, writes his number on her arm, like, clearly, like, kind of flirting with her a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she writes his, uh, her number on his arm. Um, and then later on, we see that she is at a, um, counseling with Jeff. This is the first time we're seeing Jeff in the present day. Um, yeah, which I is think, cool. Yeah. You know, the actor, actor is pretty good. Like, he definitely looks like, um, because a lot of steps that we kind of complain, like, so, well, like, Shauna, past and present, looks very similar. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, all of them look pretty good, like, like pretty spot on, I guess. Uh, Jeff, yeah, also looks like past and present looks, yeah, about the same or like what I would expect. Yeah. I forgot that this was, uh, like Jeff's introduction. I remember like we meet him in episode two, but I forgot like the therapist like scene was like the first time we like saw him. I thought like we saw him, uh, yeah. you know, cause I remember this Fender Bender crush happened, but I forgot that it happened like after, uh, like before, I'm sorry, I forgot it happened before we met Jeff. I thought we had already met Jeff. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I think the actor that plays Jeff is solid. Um, he's a, he's like a good character. Um, I don't think he likes, to, you know, I mean, how can, how can I word this without spoiling? Like, he would, I don't think he could do a lot. If he got his own show, obviously, I don't think he would be like main character worthy. I think he needs to kind of bounce off like Shauna and bounce off like all of the other like main cast, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. I, he wouldn't really like work having like his own show and all that type of stuff. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, like he, he served his role fine. Um, yeah. The actors, like the yeah, actor they're... could do his own show, but like Jeff is like a character, wouldn't be able to be like his own main character, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, they're at marriage counseling, and um, the counselor mentions, like, how's your sex life? And then uh, they're like, eh, yeah, so basically, like, they're, like, kind of skirting around the question. They're, like, not sleeping together. Yeah. And this ties into what we find out later. Um, so, uh, she, like, says, like, you two should sleep together sometime this week and, like, act out a fantasy to have. Um, so, later on, they're, like, in the room, and it's, like, super, like, robotic. <laughs> You know, they're kind of just, like, awkwardly standing away from each other. And um, I think this is a good contrast within the past, because last episode, they're, like, um, you know, like, they're, like, getting, they're hooking up with each other, like, behind Jackie's back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, compare that to, like, now, where they're just, like, super awkward with each other, and, like, you know... <laughs> They're they're acting like they haven't been married to each other for the last twenty years. Like they're acting like strangers. Yeah, and when I was um, watching this, like this was kind of like cool because like, you know, I'm obviously making like speculations and stuff when I was watching this episode, like without knowledge of anything else. Like you know, we're not really because we're not seeing Jackie in the present right now. So like you know, I'm thinking like, did something happen like in the past? Like did they have like you know, um, it, so does it make it like awkward because i'm also thinking too like jackie clearly finds out that like they're obviously like seeing each other and everything like that so like this th this is why it's probably awkward for them like because jackie's not there 
Um, it's also awkward, you know, because they, you know, they didn't really get together really to like in a natural like way. They got together because like they were cheating with each other. So like it's kind of awkward that like they stayed together and everything like that. So, um, yeah. Um, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a prediction. Like uh, because we haven't seen Jackie, I'm guessing the show wants you to believe that she's dead. Uh, I'm gonna make a prediction that Jackie uh, isn't dead. I'm gonna assume she is alive. Um, in the present day, I oh, okay. don't, don't like tell me I'm right or wrong. I'm just saying that's my prediction. Because, uh, again, I feel like the obvious thing the show wants you to think that is that she's dead. Um, but uh, I'm going to make a prediction that she is alive. Because um, I, th- I think that makes, like, you know, the marriage with Jeff in the present day, um, like, more of an issue. Because, like, if she died out in the woods, then, like, I feel like Shauna marrying Jeff later on, like, isn't as big a deal. Right. Um <clears throat> Um, but yeah, they're just like super awkward with each other, which is like, you know, a good contrast to how they were, um, you know, in episode one, uh, Jeff's fantasy that he wants to enact is like that. She pretends he's a, uh, she's a customer at his, uh, furniture store. Um, and we see this furniture store is like his whole personality. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, uh, you know, it's like his sexual fantasy and like, he's, that's all he's talking about at, uh, the family dinner. I would be shocked if, like, a bunch of, like, GIFs, GIFs, whatever they're called, memes and stuff came out, like, like, this whole personality, like, with Walter Jr., like, like his whole thing was, like, the only Yeah, thing he's, like, he, like, everyone's, like, he's the breakfast guy, Jeff is the furniture guy. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised in episode one, uh, when him and Jackie were hooking up, he wasn't, like, I love your bed, you know, like, oh, my God, your bed's so good, yeah. um, or something like that. Um, um, so yeah, um, Shauna tries to, like, get into it, and she puts on, like, a British accent, you know, because she's just, like, she's not into, like, the role-playing. Yeah, that's a real accent, by the way, too. The actress, that's the actress's real accent. Yeah, she's British, so that's that's kind of funny. So, when you say put it on a British accent, she wasn't put, technically wasn't put. Yeah, she's using a real accent, yeah. So that's pretty funny. Um... And I do like the joke how, like, you know, Jeff got down to his underwear and then they started the role play. And then Jeff was like, oh, here, I'll, I'll put my shirt back on so it's, like, more realistic. So, again, they're just, like, super awkward with each other. Yeah. Um, like, Jackie can't, like, unbutton then, uh, a shirt. No, I'm not sorry, not Jackie. Shauna can't, like, unbutton a shirt, too, like, either. And all that type of stuff, like, doing this. So. Yeah. yeah. And eventually, um, Jeff was like, Shauna's like, no, can't do it. And Jeff kind of just, like, storms off a little bit. And Charles like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to go jerk off and fucking fall asleep at the sports center. Well, you um, missed a big thing that, like, because then he finds the phone number of, uh, you know, the guy that she got. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, because um, they're, like, you know, because they're, like, putting their arms around each other. And um, he sees the phone number and he's like, she's like, oh, yeah, I got to a fender bender. And he's like, and I'm just hearing about this now. Yeah. Um. I think the dinner happened before this, but, like, whatever. It's no, really this was much. first. This was first. Okay, okay. Right, because of the rabbit. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, basically just showing, like, their marriage has gone to shit and, like, further showing that, like, kind of what we saw last episode where Shauna's life, um, like, isn't, like, all that great. Like, she lives, like, a normal life, but um, it's kind of shitty. Yeah. Like, she's not happy with it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so... um. Later on, um, Shauna is in her kitchen. Um, um, her daughter didn't take the meat out, so she's, like, pissed off. Um, and um, she gets a call from um, Adam. I think you said his name was? Yep. Or what was his name? Yeah. It was Adam. Um, okay. Then he's called saying, like, hey, you didn't um, go to the auto shop that I told you about. And she's like, oh, how'd you know that? Um, but, like, you know, I, I can't afford it. Um, and he's like, you can't afford free? And then uh, she's like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i the person who owns the auto guy, you know, auto store. I, you know, I thought it'd be a fun surprise. <laughs> you know, because cause earlier he said, like, I know a guy who, like, can fix your car up. Yeah. So, like, he didn't say, like, I'll fix your car up. I liked, like, um, uh, when, like, the phone call is going on. Um, like, it doesn't even hide the fact that that's, like, a big reveal, like, in the show. Like, you can see, like, he's actually, like, at an auto shop and everything like that. Like while he's on the phone, so, like, you kind of piece together... Yeah, like, yeah it, it, doesn't, it doesn't, like, pan out when he says he's at the auto shop. Like, you could see him at the auto shop before he even says it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
And they basically says, like, um, you know, he's trying to tell him, like, don't worry about it. Like, I feel bad if I took it for free. And then he's like, well, tell you what, you know, like, have dinner with me. And, you know, I'll fix your car up. And um, she's, like, she, like, thinks about it for a second. You know, because, like, you know, as we saw, like, she's, like, not happy with her life. She's not close with her daughter. Um, she's, like, in a shitty marriage. Um, but um, she basically says, like, no, like, I can't. It just, it, it feels wrong. And then um, he says, like, you know, I thought you were the type that break the rules. But, uh, you know, okay, bye, Shauna. Um, I thought that was interesting, an interesting wording. Like, I thought you were the type to break the rules. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if there's, like, more to that. Like, like I don't know. It, it seemed weird. Like, it's, like, that seemed very specific. Um, do you think, like, this is the last we've seen of Adam? Or do you think we'll, like, see more of him or anything like that? Well, because of what we see with um, Jeff's phone at the end, no, I, I think Adam's going to come back. Okay. Um, it, it's tough, because I'm like, I don't know what's super important or what isn't. But when Adam, when Adam said, like, I thought you were the type to break the rules, I was like, does he know something? Does, like, he already know, Shauna? Like, I'm super paranoid. I'm like, I don't trust any one of you motherfuckers. Especially, too, because there's a big um, storyline that happens, like, with, uh, you know, Misty and uh, Natalie that kind of makes you, like, question everything, too, which we'll get to. Right, right, right. Um, um, so, um, yeah, so Donna um, hangs up, but she, like, kind of takes what he said to heart, like, about being the type that would break the rules. Yeah. Um, because remember the whole reason she's even married to, the, to death is she was, you know, fucking broke the rules and fucked her best friend's boyfriend. I want to um, kind of touch on too, like when you say like you know Shauna has like a shitty life and everything like that. Um, you also have to question like does Shauna deserve it too? Because like you know her breaking the rules has got caused her to be in this life. Like it feels like she's kind of getting baby blue. G- guess I got what I deserved. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, and it's also like it seems like a choice because you know as Shauna said last episode like they all chose to like keep a little low profile yeah um, so yeah it seems like yeah like you said it kind of she, she kind of deserves this life like she kind of made her bed now she has to sleep in it right um, but it's also like yeah it seems like she kind of yeah um, but then she sees another rabbit out in, in the garden and uh, she channels her inner Misty and decides to fucking murder the rabbit again, like last episode. Again, symbolic. Um, again. Um, yeah. Of, like, destroying, like, innocence and, like, nice things. Um, Stop doing this, though. Like, how many rabbits have to die to get over that? Like, leave oh, these rabbits alone. She has, like, a fucking closet, closet of them. Um, yeah, but she uh, ends up, like, uh, skinning this rabbit and, like, cutting it open and, like, taking the guts out. And, like, very clearly... Like, this is, like, something she learned while she was out in the woods for those 19 months. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, you know, later at dinner, um, Sean and Jeff and uh, their daughter are, like, eating. Callie. Uh, Sean and their daughter, Allie, thank you. Is oh, that Callie. her name? Callie. 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 Okay. Callie are eating. Um, Jeff is, like, talking about the store. And, like, no one's really giving a shit. And then I, I, like, I do like how Jeff called them out. He's like, He's like, oh, I'm sorry, am I boring you? Like, like he like stops the story halfway. And it's like, are you guys listening to me? Yeah. Um. Um. But yeah, and then um, everyone they kind of change the subject, and then uh, well, not change the subject, but Jeff is like trying to make small talk, and he's like, hmm, this stew is like great. Did you uh new recipe? Or you know, like he's still super awkward. Um, and then Shauna says like. Um, I skin, I caught a rabbit, skinned it from, um, like, head to anus. And everyone, like, is like, oh, geez, mom, that's a gross joke. You know, not knowing she's serious. Yeah. And that makes me wonder, like, how much Jeff knows about what happened in, um, the woods. Like, I'm guessing Shauna didn't really tell him anything. Uh, yeah, I don't think he said all that much. Um, I don't know, like, what, you know, uh, obviously, I think he knows probably, like, about the plane crash and everything like that you know I well i mean obviously because like they were missing for 19 months it'd be a little weird if you well like she shows up again after 19 months he's like hey there you guys are man finals lasted a really long time yeah um but you know uh i think like you know i don't think he knows like the specifics of like what they what happened out there and everything like that. that's what i mean so like he like when um when she like mentioned the rabbit he was like like immediately assumed she was joking like she wouldn't even be capable of that um, 
thing. And it's like, dude, she survived out in the woods for 19 months. I mean, she probably have to hunt. Um, yeah, and then, um, you know, so Thon is kind of sticking with this, like, breaking the rules mentality. Because um, later on, Jeff is, like, on the phone, on the computer working. And then Shauna, like, comes up behind him, like, seductively, and is, like, tells him, like, hey, um, our daughter's, like, over at her boyfriend's house. And, like, you know, she starts reenacting, um, you know, like, the furniture store fantasy. And she, like, gets into it more this time. And um, I like how, like, when Jeff, like, goes to, like, you know, like, wrap his arms around her, he, like, pushes him off. Like, she's, like, kind of taking control. What you know, um, um, which, you know, I think it's symbolic of like her trying to like take, take control over her life again. Yeah, and you know, translates to because like she was kind of taking control when they were cheating, anyways, like the first time around and everything like that. You know, she, yeah, yeah, so but yeah, I agree, definitely um, taking control of her life again and everything. Yeah, so and it cuts to them, um, you know, in bed afterwards. Um, and you know, Jeff and her are like happy, um. Just said he's gonna take a shower, but I do like he brings up like, "Hey, you were just like joking about the rabbit thing, right?" And she's yeah. like, "Uh, yeah, totally." Um, but then while Jeff's in the shower, uh, she sees that Jeff like phone dinged, and she checked and got a uh, Jeff got a call uh, message from Bianca, someone called Bianca. Brittany. And then uh, she. No, it was said, Bianca. You're right. It was Bianca. Yeah, she uh, texted Jeff, being like, "Hey, you know, we'll meet up at four usual place." So uh, the implication is that Jeff has been cheating on Shauna because they haven't like been sleeping together for a long time. Uh, I I don't know. Like again, that's the implication, but like we're not sure. Like you know, it could be a misunderstanding. Um, yeah. You know, um, I probably not. But, like you know, it could be. Like I, I think it'd be kind of interesting if like Shauna like ends up cheating on Jeff with Adam because she thinks Jeff's cheating on her, but then it turns out like Jeff wasn't cheating on her. Yeah, so, like, you know, she kind of went back to her old ways, really, for nothing, and all that type of stuff, and she comes yeah. off looking bad. Um, but, you know, it'd be kind of cool, too, like, if Jeff, like, never mentioned it to and all that type of stuff, and, like, he finds out about it, um, and everything like that, um, like himself. Yeah. So, I am interested to see, like, where this goes. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it for Shauna. You know, again, this was pretty much just girl that she like I said, like, is, like, kind of miserable with her life, um, but, like, what Adam said to her kind of makes her want to take charge of her life again and kind of get back to who she used to be, you know, kind of, like, taking charge a bit more and, like, breaking the rules, but, uh, now we see that, um, she's kind of back to square one, where now Jeff is, like, presumably sleeping with another woman behind her back. And, you know, we'll mention this, too, like, we haven't had too much, like, with Callie, like, her daughter. I mean, you can probably tell, because AJ can't even know, doesn't even know her name yet, and he's so, uh, yeah. um, obviously we don't need to have anything yet, but I would kind of like, you know, her to like get something, like maybe get her feelings on how she kind of feels about like yeah. her parents truly and everything like that. Cause obviously right now she's yeah. just kind of just the daughter at this point. Cause obviously, uh, you're going to get into like the next storyline. Uh, it kind of, uh, you know, is different from, uh, Thaisa and like her wife's, um, son, even though it's not a son, but whatever. Um, but you know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. um, right. Um, well, I didn't actually think it was. I thought it was like the like adopted son, you know. But the, I'm, I'm oh, yeah, get... right. That was, that was, yeah, he's, he's their adopted son, right? Yeah. So when I say the son, I, you know, when I say not the son, I, you we're, know. we're like, like, yeah, I know, like biological, but like, yeah, yeah. presumably like they're adopted. Yeah, but anyhow, because like, what my point, what I was trying to make is, you know, Callie doesn't have any storylines, but you could see like they're actually like given like. You know, Sammy actually like shit dude. Like he's not just like there and all that type of stuff. So that's kind of the difference. Yeah. So, want to talk about everything that's going well, on? With... Uh, you want to talk about uh, Taisa's storyline? Um, yeah, I'll talk since you've been talking a bit. Talk about I'm gonna talk about Natalie and Missy stuff because I, I like to talk about that. So, okay, well, do you want to talk about that? Because I've been talking for a while. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, that uh, so Natalie and Misty throughout this episode, um. Misty's on a uh, a blind date. Um, obviously, she it's implied that she uh, met this guy online and everything like that. And the guy's really not that into the date. I think he realized like pretty quickly that Misty was crazy. Uh, so well, I like uh, how it starts off. 
with her like listing like body parts. She's like knuckles, like you know, like and like shit like that. And she's like, and then she ends it with saying, "So that's what turns me on." Yeah, um, I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. So yeah, the, the, the date's just very awkward. Uh, what I really like about this is uh, Misty's actually like, you know, um, using the fact that she like she's nerdy and awkward. Um, and she's basically losing, using, like, you know, her defects and everything like that to, uh, manipulate the person into, like, kind of doing what she wants her to do. Because, like, you know, later on the waitress comes over and, like, he asks, like, if you guys want any more wine. And he's clearly lying, being like, oh, yeah, I don't think I should drink anymore tonight. And she's less like, wait, why not? Why do you want to drink? And then, uh, you know, he tries to play it off as if, like, he has to work the next day. But she's like, well, didn't you just get, like, fired? And then, uh... You know, he, he kind of guilted into, like, having another drink because, like, Misty mentions, like, oh, I get it. You don't want to have, you don't want to stick around and have fun. You've met me now and stuff. And then, like, later on when, like, uh, you know, the guy gives her, like, a ride home because Misty's car breaks down, air quotes. Um, she, yeah. uh, you know, she, like, tries to get the guy to come inside. And, uh, the, you know, the guy doesn't really want to at first, but then Misty, like, <laughs> you know, manipulates him again by being like, I get it, because I'm nerd and awkward and everything like that, so, the guy goes inside and, uh, you know, Misty's kind of still giving off, like, a bunch of red flags and everything like that, because, like, you know, uh, that's what just Misty does, you know, because she mentions, like, she has a bird, and, like, the bird's, like, gonna, like, attack this guy, and she says, like, but he's just gotta get used to you and everything like that, but just cover your face just in case, and I just felt so bad. I felt so bad for this guy. Um, oh, yeah. I do like how, um, you know, because you're going to say, after um, he sees Natalie with the gun, he, he just, like, finally has enough. He's like, all right, I'm done. I'm leaving. Yep. But, yeah, well, like, you know, before this, he would be nice and, and shit. But after that, he's like, nope, all right, I, I'm just done. I'm, I'm done. Bye. I don't, that was a good joke. Um, and I, I don't think neither of them even, like, acknowledge that he left. <laughs> like, he just leaves, and they just, like, continue on with the conversation. Yeah. But, yeah, so, um... Yeah, she turns the lights on, and we see that uh, Natalie's there with a shotgun. Uh, and then, um, yeah, the guy, like you just said, like, just went, no, I'm done, I'm le and just leaves, which was really funny. Um, and, um, you know, I liked Natalie's uh, opening line, which just says, hello, Misty, you crazy fucking bitch, which was just really great, because that's what everybody's, like, thinking through, like, all the fans are probably thinking, like, throughout yeah. the show, so it's just really good. Um, and it's nice that this, Misty gets called out on it because obviously in the past no one knows that she's like psychotic so now it's like I kind of like in the present that it shows like everyone kind of like knows that she's psychotic now so again good characterization there um, and Misty's like unfazed about the fact that like someone's holding her at gunpoint pretty much like she continues like her conversation and everything like that you know because typically in TV shows hands go up and everything like that when guns I don't know I think it's because she yeah. knows Natalie like you know, Nat she, as we see Natalie in the past, and like Natalie in the present, I don't think she, I don't think she actually believed Natalie was actually going to pull the trigger. So that's probably why she didn't really uh, make much of her minds to it. But um, you know, um, you, uh, Natalie reveals that she got a postcode, and it has uh, you know, um, like a little message on it, and it's uh, it has like a symbol, and, um, which is what the F shop then. Uh, that's basically you know where the title of the episode comes in. And uh, this is a symbol that's very. Um, I, I didn't really mention it in the past because there wasn't really like a, any place for it. But just basically, like, while they were like in the woods, we saw that the symbol was like on a tree stump. Yeah. Um. So like, this is a symbol that they all know. So that's why uh, obviously this is suspicious. Um. And uh, Natalie thinks that uh, Misty sent the uh, postcard, but M Misty's just like. Well, I didn't send the postcard because I got the same thing. And, you know, Ma Misty shows Natalie the postcode. And obviously, N Natalie's suspicious. She's just like, well, how do I know you didn't just, uh, you know, send the postcard to yourself also? Which, you know, honestly, knowing Misty, I totally think that she would do that if she did send the postcard, too. Like, I would totally think Misty yeah. would do that. Um, but, you know, Misty's, uh, Misty's like, response to that is just being like, I guess I could s say the same for you. So basically, Misty's only like defense that like she didn't send it is that um you know like you know Natalie also could have been the one to send it, right? So so uh, I'm still suspicious of Misty. You know, I, I think it's entirely possible that she uh, was the one to send it. Yeah, 
So they'll all try. They're both trying. Oh, I'm still keeping my eye on her. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, they're trying to come up with all these different types of suspects um, about who could have sent the uh, postcode. So they go to a bar. Um, I don't. They do a funny scene here where uh, you know, and it's all, and it's like a, um, like a low rent bar too. Like it's not like an expensive one. You could tell that this is like a type of bar that like someone like Natalie would go to, like not high class and all that type of stuff. Um, but uh, you know, um, you know, I they, they were funny joke They're with Natalie. The, uh, huh? They're at the uh bar from the SpongeBob movie. Yeah. You know, all blowing uh, bubble blowing babies will be will be beaten senseless. <laughs> no, hey, no one was blowing bubbles, so that's good. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, although at the ball uh, that Hank gets into like the fight with in uh, Breaking Bad, um, Walt blew some bubbles, so uh, Hank Mike had to show him his boss. Yeah, uh, but anyhow, um, so um, yeah, so uh, they do a funny <laughs> joke where like Natalie has like. A cup of beer, um, and then a bottle, and Missy thinks like the bottle's for her, but it's actually for Natalie. And uh, Missy has like this big like box full of like files and everything like that. And we find out that Missy, uh, you know, basically is like an undercover uh, private investigator, but not officially. Basically, what she does is she's in like a bunch of um, she's in like a big chat server with just a bunch of people that uh call themselves private investigators, but really they just discuss cases and stuff like among themselves and everything like well, that. This is like a real thing, you know, like like a bunch of um, women who like are into like uh, crime dramas and like cold yeah. cases and they like basically get together and try to like solve them or like discuss them. Yeah, that's like well, a real thing. Well, it's not woman either. Like uh, we'll find out later, but there's a few. Well, it, it's very popular among women, but yeah, it, you know, there's also like guys in it too, of course. Yeah. I'm also saying that it's funny because um, Dexter New Blood uh, <laughs> did this. Yeah, I say I say uh, I, there was a reason I also corrected you that it wasn't just woman because this ends up becoming like a plot thing in season two with that, those guys in there too. So. Well, okay, cool. Well, I, I was just saying like in, in real life, like like it's a uh, yeah. But like my sister watches a shit ton of like podcasts on like um on like you know cold cases and like crime. I'm just saying that's like a, a big demographic of it. Yeah, it's not specifically women. Yeah, um, I obviously it this sense, would be super into that shit. Yeah, definitely. Um, but again, they don't really like work for anyone. They consider themselves like, uh, not private. It's not in, well, I was gonna say independent contractors. Like they consider themselves like that, but they don't do. They do it for like a hobby, like you said. Um, but you know, we find out a big thing that happened um, from this. Uh, we find out Travis is still alive because uh, Misty like tracked him down. She has like his driver's license, which is like, come on, Misty, you just every t- Misty just ceases to amaze me how fucked up she gets. Like every episode, I think I see you well, like To be fair, she did have a whole fo- like like because she um went to the bar with Natalie and she like brought a folder with like everything related to the plane crash. Yeah, yeah, but it's just like, so like, like she said like, she, like it took a long time, but she's been like keeping tabs on like. Everyone who was involved in the crash. Yeah, but this was cool that we. And she out... said Travis like, did not want to be found. Like she was, she had a really hard time trying to find him. Yeah, but uh, you know, this was cool because like we had. Really... You're right. It is creepy. Like at least it's not like she's stalking Travis. It's yeah. well, she kind of is, but like you know, she's doing it for everyone. Yeah, but this was cool because like we had, like I said, we had met Travis really yet in the past, so this was kind of cool. Like we found out that he lived in the present. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, they obviously, uh, there's a big implication that there's like some type of like relationship, either like some type of friendship or like, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend type relationship between like, you know, Natalie and Travis. Cause she's very uneasy when, uh, Misty finds out that like she found Travis and everything like that. And then, um, yeah, and later on Natalie gives him a phone call. It's like, well, you'll, you'll talk about it, but yeah. Yeah. And then, um, she finds, uh. She gets like she finds the code that like uh, Jessica Roberts, who we talked about the last episode, like the fake journalist. So, uh, you know, uh, at this point, we know that uh, Jessica Roberts has at least been going to like everyone in the Yellow Jackets like group now because she's gone to Misty. She hasn't gone to Natalie yet because she obviously she she just came out of rehab, so it makes sense that she wouldn't have gone to Natalie yet. So, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, really before anything else can happen, we find out that like uh, you know, two people like 
bought drinks for Misty and uh, Natalie. And originally, I was thinking, like, it was just, you know, because typically when this happened, it was just going to be, like these, like, these two, like, tough guys that were going to, like, you know, try to mess them up or something like that. But, uh, no, uh, if you were paying attention in the last episode, it ended up being uh, Kevin, spelled with a Y, because that's how he spells his name. Uh, he's too cool to spell his name with an I, so, um, but, uh, Hi, Kevin. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> um, but this was cool. Uh, he was the goth kid from, uh, you know, um, what Natalie's friend from the past. So this was kind of cool that we saw him again in the present. I think it, it kind of rewarded the audience for paying attention to those characters because obviously, uh, you know... I feel like uh, we're starting to see them again in the present and everything like that. And this was cool because it, it wasn't it was it wasn't the kid you thought it was. When I originally when I saw this the first time, I thought he was the kid that like you know sh showed his nipples and everything like that to uh, the other kids. But no, it's actually the goth kid. So it's like ooh okay because he didn't hear. I don't think he says anything in the first episode. I don't think he has a line. I don't think he says a word. So it's kind of cool that like hey, he's the one, probably like what a few sentences and stuff. But like not yeah, like, not much. I'm just saying they talk. Um, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, but uh, we find out mm -hmm. though that uh, you know, uh, him and Natalie have kind of lost contact, obviously, and obviously they don't go into detail about why they have. But you know, the implication that I got when I first watched this was because you know, um, we find out later on, like you know, basically Natalie's blowing him off, and he says, "So I see you guys are busy, but you know, since you're in the area, if you want to give me a call, just give me a call." And he gives a he gives him like a business card, and we find out now that he's a, a detective nowadays. And this actually well, makes sense. I, um, yeah. I, I, I like what he said was like, um, you know, here's my card. You know, let me know if you want to get a drink in 20 years. Yeah. But like, uh, he was being a little smart about it. Like, you know, because she was blowing him off. Yeah. But, um, you know, um, I thought this was cool. Like, it made sense that, like, that's the career path he took because uh, a lot of people that get kind of into, like, the police or, like, this type of work, like, detective work, are always kind of like, not always, but for the most part, will have, like, troubled lives, like, in the past. So it kind of makes sense that they end up kind of, like, going down that path, you know, because they've been through it themselves, so they feel like they want to help other people before they kind of, uh, you know, make life's work for themselves. And it kind of makes sense that he became a detective, so I kind of liked that they uh, did that. It also just kind of really makes him, like, you know, evolve. Like, it showed how much his character has evolved since the past, which I thought was really cool. Um it's a good contrast with Natalie because Natalie seems like she just got worse after, you know, because of the plane crash. Yeah. Like, you know, and, you know, they were both kind of punks in, in high school, but I, uh, you know, he eventually kind of like grew up, got a good job and he's like helping people now. And, uh, you know, Natalie's just gotten worse. Yeah. You know, it could be a mixture, you know, we don't really know when they lose contact because obviously, uh, it could have been like, did, did, I mean, did Natalie just come back in 19 months and he was like, he like got his life cleaned up. I know you're thinking, AJ, you are, but he was goth. But a lot can a lot can happen in 19 months. Like maybe he just, you know, so. Uh, I mean, I, I assume they talked after she got back. Yeah. I just figured that, yeah. like, you know, she was like too traumatized after what happened, you know, with the plane crash that she just kind of like separated herself from her old friends. Yeah. Um, because we see here that, like, uh, you know, when he's like talking to her, Kevin's talking to Natalie. She's like kind of blowing him off, like not really talking to him. Um. And he just kind of just eventually leaves after giving her um, his, like, uh, business card. Yeah. And then uh, Misty's yeah. like, oh, hey, that, that was, man, who would have thought that, you know, the golf kid ended up becoming, like, such a handsome detective? Like, weren't you guys, like, friends? Yeah. And uh, then Natalie kind of just, like, quietly says, like, yeah, we were best friends. Um, okay. And she sounded really sad when she said that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I got the implication of, like, yeah, she's kind of, like, cutting herself off from the people she cared about. Like, uh, you know, like when he was like trying to like, you know, you know, be friends with her again and like get in touch. Uh, she like you know, blew him off. And then as soon as he was gone, she like was sad, you know, that like they used to be so close. So then, uh, you know, we find out like Natalie is staying at like, you know, a shitty motel, which makes sense because, you know, she just got out of rehab and with all the drugs and everything like that. She obviously can't afford to stay like at a nice motel or anything like that. So it's kind of like a shitty one. Um, yeah, well, um, after Kevin leaves, N Natalie, um, like, grabs Kevin's, uh, not Kevin, um, Travis's, like, paperwork from, uh, Misty and, like, takes off. And Misty grabs, uh, and, uh, the business card when Natalie leaves, so. 
Um, yeah, I was going to say, I, um, I, I noticed Natalie grabbed Kevin's business card. So I uh, I hope later in the season that Misty gives it to Natalie and, and uh, Natalie kind of like, uh, you know, reaches out to Kevin. Yeah. I think that would be a good way of showing that she's like trying to move on with her life. Uh, but, you know, later that night, she's kind of uh, a little drunk and she calls uh, Travis. A little, and... more than a little, I'd say. Yeah. And, um, you know, all the only thing she says is Travis and Travis just like, so you have the one number. So it kind of shows that like Travis, you know, what everything, what Misty said was true. Like, you know, uh, Travis is just trying to cut himself off from everybody. Um, which makes sense, obviously. Cause then, you know, if you remember, uh, in the past, he was kind of cutting himself off from everybody because of, uh, he just went through a traumatic situation. So, you know, you can make the argument like in the present, the same thing, like he, he went through that traumatic situation. So he's trying to, he's trying to cut himself off from everybody. Um, yeah. And, then, and um, Natalie seemed really sad um, at that, and away just hung up. So, like you said, it seems like the implication is that like Natalie and Travis end up becoming like close, whether that's like friends or like they ended up like dating while they were out in the woods. You know, we don't know yet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the implication is that like they end up like growing closer over the nineteen months they're granted. And then uh, the next morning. Um... Natalie uh, is getting ready to leave to go somewhere, but her car won't start. So then uh, Misty comes over, and she's just like, hey, you need a ride somewhere? And she uh, makes it seem like she just grabbed coffee and just saw that Natalie was there. But, you know, we know that Misty is bullshit, and Natalie knows this is bullshit. Like, pretty much Misty uh, went out of her way to, like, go visit her and everything like that. And, you know, Natalie said, like, she's going to go on a road trip to... Um, see Travis and Misty basically offers for her to go like I had all these plans and I'm off the next couple of days and uh, Natalie's just like sure but I'm driving but the implication that I get like Natalie realized that Misty wasn't going to take no for an answer so she kind of like feels like she doesn't have a choice and everything like that and she kind of like really didn't have anyone off anybody else left to like turn to so it's like the only one that was this is that was like the only way to get to Travis so she's kind of willing to yeah you know well um also, the implications seem to be that, so, like, earlier on Misty's date, she said, like, oh, yeah, my car had, had car troubles. That's so weird. Um, because the implications seem to be, like, her car was fine. Yeah. She just wanted, like, an excuse for her date to, like, bring her home and, like, you know, presumably go in and, like, sleep together. And then it seems like, I think here Misty fucked with uh, Natalie's car. Like, like she, like, that. got her car like, yeah, because you said, like, you know, Miss, like, she has car trouble. Presumably, it's because Misty, like, fucked with her car. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, uh, Misty planned this because uh, when Natalie gets in the car, we see that Misty grabbed, like, two coffees. But, like, Misty tries to play love. Like, whoa, well, I always get two of everything when I get some. But, obviously, that wasn't the case. But, again, I think Misty... Yeah. Real- I-, I like that Natalie, like, I think realized that Misty, like, basically sabotage the situation but like she just doesn't give a shit because like she understands like that's to, that's the nature of the beast when it comes to misty but like again i think that was like the only way she was going to be able to see travis so she was kind of like okay i'll play your game type yeah. of thing so. it's weird because like again you know miss natalie started the episode with like pointing a gun at misty but then like five minutes later they're at a bar talking um so they have a in they have like they seem to have like kind of like a, a frenemy situation yeah um so yeah, I liked this a lot, you know, um, I liked the, you know, I liked the, uh, dynamic between, like, Natalie and Misty in the present and everything yeah. like that. I think it's, I think it's very good. Um, I like, too, because those... Most like, interesting is they haven't even really, like, talked in the past yet. Yeah, I know what I really like about it, too, is, like, they're so different in the present, because, like, Misty's, like, very crazy, but also, like, very, like, bubbly and everything like that. Right. Natalie's kind of, like, the recovering, like, alcohol, well, drug addict and everything like that, and kind of, like... You know, even though she's not, like, punk rock anymore, she still has, like, those punk rock, like, tendencies. So she's kind of, like, just kind of isolated herself from everything. So they're both dealing, and some of them not dealing with the plane crash, like, in different ways. So, like, the yeah. differences make, like, the relationship even better. Yeah, I mean, they like, seem to have, like, a bad cop, worse cop thing. But, like, you know, who's who's worse cop, you know? I would say Misty. Um, yeah, probably Misty. Um, somehow. But yeah, and then um, that pretty much uh, leaves the only storyline left is Taisa in the modern day. Uh, definitely the shortest out of the three that we had this episode. Uh, um, probably the most so, significant. Yeah, probably like the yeah the very end of it's pretty significant. Yeah. Um, so Taisa gets home uh, late for dinner, but she brings home like um, 
like some like great like takeout food to like kind of like make it up for um her son Sammy and her wife. Um, you know, Sammy's happy that she's home, and he ends up like going to the living room to watch TV. Her wife is like upset that she was home late, but um, like not that upset. She like understands. Like she's like, all right, like Tyisa, I understand what you're doing is important. It's just that, you know, like, Sammy had um, a parent-teacher conference earlier, and, like, you know, it would have been nice if you were there. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't blame you for not being there, but I am upset that you weren't. And, like, it's a and it's an adjustment because, you know, obviously, like, um, Sean has said, like, they were all supposed to lie low, but now Thais is running for senator. So, like, presumably this is, like, a big change. Like, they weren't, uh, you know, Thais was, like, having a normal life, and now, like, the you know, now she's, like, crazy busy. I want to like about this though is that like it shows like, you know, what like someone is sacrificing to like when they run for office like the the set like if they have a family and stuff they're t- spending all of their time and like resources and everything like that, focusing on the getting them to run so like, you know if you're gonna vote and everything like that it makes people think about like hey, you know they're, they're sacrificing. Oh yeah, because now, Taisa is like promoting like public school and her um in her campaign. Um, but, um, Tice's wife mentions that, um, Sammy is like having troubles, like, um, adjusting and making friends. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's like, maybe public school is a mistake because they're like extremely well off. Like their house is super nice. Yeah. And like, obviously she's running for senators. So they're like pretty, you know, like rich. Um, so like maybe we should have put them in private school, but then Tice says like, you know, I'd be hyper- hypocrite in my campaign. If I, you know, like took my kid out of public school, um, you know, and, and she's also saying like, you know, if everyone leaves the system, then like, it's not going to get better. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, you know, uh, this was mainly to show, um, Taisa and her wife have a pretty good relationship, even though it's strained because of the Senator running, like her wife is very supportive of, of her and like believes in that she's doing a good thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, of course, uh, mentioning that, like, Sammy is, like, having troubles making friends at school, uh, we find out in the next scene, Thaisa, that's, like, a bit more important than we initially thought, um, because Thaisa, like, goes to her son Sammy's room, and Sammy doesn't really want to go to the park, he doesn't have any friends he wants to hang out with, um, so he's kind of, like, introverted. And earlier, Thaisa was like, oh, you know, I was like that at that age, it's not a big deal. Right. Uh, but there's more to it, because... Um, so basically, Tyson tries to, like, you know, be friends with him. Um, she, like, ends up doing, like, um, light, light show puppets. You know, like, where you, I, I don't know what it's called, but, you know, where you do a flashlight and you, like, do things with your hands to, like, make animals. Yeah. Um, Tyson's just really good at it. But then Tyson, like, does a wolf, and she, like, gives herself PTSD. Um, presumably, at some point, you know, during the 19 months, they were, like, attacked by wolves because they're out in the woods. Um... Uh, because, you know, um, in episode one, we saw bits of, like, you know, they're out there when it's, like, snowing and it's winter. Yeah. Um, but, you know, right now, it's like, seems pretty, like, normal temperature. Yeah. So, and uh, again, I like this. Cause, I, think like... saw, I think you said in the wiki, they crash somewhere in Canada, which gets fucking cold. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it probably gets bad for them later. Um, but this was good because, like, uh, I like that we're, like, we're seeing stuff that we don't know happens yet. So, like, we're going to be, like, waiting for that moment to happen because like we're seeing them like dealing with it in the present so we're like okay when are they gonna get attacked yeah. by wolves and everything like that so and that's also just showing like how much this has affected them like yeah. you know she was doing a hand puppet of a wolf and that like trigger you know just like shit that like would happen in day-to-day life is like triggering ptsd yeah um and again i like it too because it's like um it'd be weird if like we didn't actually see the ptsd until, like, it actually happened in the show. Like, I like that we'll get, like, short snippets of it. Because it'd just be weird, like, you know, to see them not affected in the present. Because, like, you know, some stuff, we uh, if they do, like, a movie, when they go to, like, the present, we won't, they won't, like, show the effect of, like, whatever happened in the past until we see it in the past. So I like that Yellow Jacket's taking, like, a different approach to it and everything. Like yeah, that. yeah. Like, I'm glad we're getting bits of, like, the future stuff, yeah. Um, but then Thaisa, um, in order to, like, calm herself down, it's like, hey, let's open your window. Um, but when she opens it, she sees that her son has covered, uh, his window in, like, drawings. And I only saw a couple of drawings, but the drawings are, like, a bit disturbing. Yeah. Very um, 
there's like people in like black cloaks in one of them and i think one of them is like like a storm um which like um you know that might have been you know like the storm that crashed the plane although again we don't know if that's like what happened um and then she's like Thaisa's like like upset about this so presumably like these are drawings related to the plane crash and like what happened and and she's like what is this and then um so I you know so um I was gonna complain a little bit about this not as big a deal as with the misty thing but I like no, okay, well, I, I don't like in a show when um, a character is like, explain this, and they answer with like a really cryptic um, message, okay. and then that the other person just like drops it and like is like, can you elaborate on that? I like that T is Taisa. Okay, because her son was like, said something about like the woman who watches me in the tree. And then Taisa was like, look at me and like explain what you mean. Like, this is important. You need to like be clear what you mean. Because I like, I was like, good. Because, like, she's, like, not taking the cryptic bullshit. She's like, no, you need to, like, explain to me, like, what you mean by this. Yeah. Um, but then Sammy, like, turns to her and goes, Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Like, presumably he's, like, quoting, like, like... So the implication seems to be that, like, some lady is, like, like spying on him at night through his window. And is, like, taunting him by, like, like creepily, like, singing his name. Yeah. So like I'm I'm saying I appreciate that Taisa was like being a parent and being like, no no, like this is serious. Like explain to me what you mean. Yeah. But then when Sammy says something else that's cryptic, the scene just like ends. I'm like, no, Taisa, like ask more questions. Right. Yeah, because then it just cuts to the next scene and all that type of stuff. Right, I'm like, like how did she on to what Sammy just said? Yeah. Um Um So yeah. So I, I was um, praising the show for being like, okay, good. Taisa is like, you know, like, like is like pressing Sammy and is like, Sammy, this is important. You need to tell me what happened. But then like just drops it, you know, and, and, the, and the scene cuts. So yeah, um, that was something I didn't like, you know, if, if she like kept pressing Sammy and then Sammy like didn't want to like, like refuse to talk about it, that would be fine. But um, the scene just like cuts after what Sammy says, what he says. And I'm like, what did Taisa say after that you know like, yeah, that like what really happened weird, yeah but i do like this though uh, it's like uh like again it's setting up uh you know i kind of like you know uh i again everyone's kind of going through like different stuff post plane crash you know shauna with uh her marriage falling apart misty nothing natalie kind of like you know getting out of rehab um and you know kind of like one of them like the relationships that she has and everything like that and you see the relationships that she doesn't have and I like that, you know, Thaisa's then is, like, struggling a bit to kind of, like, get her son to, like, socialize and, like, you know, asking about, like, what the hell is this going on here? And, you know, struggling, like, with being, like, senator now. And that, that's a big change yeah. nowadays and everything. And I'm also interested in this because, um, like, Sammy's p- pictures, like I said, seem to be related to, like, what happened in the woods. So, like, this person who's, like, spying on Sammy, like, are they doing more than spying? Like, it seems like they're, like, actually talking to Sammy. Right. Like, so, and they're, like, telling them things. Yeah. Uh, which is creepy as fuck. Um, and it's also, like, sh- like scary as shit, because, like, um, we saw with the postcards, with yeah, the symbol got- on it, that, like, they are they were mailed out to the survivors of the plane crash. So, like, you know, Misty and Natalie. Yeah. But now someone is, like, targeting Thaisa's son, you know? Like, not Thaisa, like, her family. Yeah. So... You know, this is going, like, beyond just, like, the people who are in the plane crash. This is affecting, like, their loved ones. Like, whoever's doing this is, like, a sick fuck. Oh, what I like about this, too, is, like, uh, I, uh, well, I, 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 it's not that I like, I like about this, but I wanted to make sure we mentioned this. I think, uh, we saw that Taisa got one, like, in this episode, uh, like, because she was looking through it, like, uh, and everything like that. So, yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, we didn't see if Shauna got one or not, but, like, presumably she did as well. Yeah, uh, but I like this, you know. Uh, that's pretty much the end of this episode. Um, yeah, really great. Um, I don't think it's quite a B plus. Uh, I I would definitely give it like a solid B, not quite a B plus. Definitely everything in the past was the highlight, mainly the stuff like with yeah. past Misty and everything like that. But I definitely uh, thought this was like another solid episode. I get it. You could definitely. Th- I felt. I definitely think there's progress though. I, I, if if you had to ask me, like. 
if you held a gun to my head right now and asked which episode I like better, I'd probably pick this one just because, like, you know, they do a really good job of, like, building the characters up. But I don't think we've had, like, an episode yet that's been, like, an amazing, fantastic episode. But I like that, you know, the show's getting better. It's not like it's, you know, this thing's happening, this thing's being set up. It's not like it's re regressing or it's not like, you know, it's not keeping your interest and all that type of stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I mentioned this to Owen off camera, but um, with Travis finding out he's alive, I'm fine with it. I'm just worried that like that they're gonna confirm too many people are alive because right now we know Shauna, Kaisa, um, Natalie, and Misty are alive. Now we know Travis is alive. So it's five people we already know like survive yeah. and like make it out okay. Yeah. Well, not okay, but like you know they're like alive. Um, so, you know, not, not a problem with this episode. I'm just cautious that future episodes are going to keep confirming people who are alive. Right. You know? Like, I think they should uh, dial that back a bit. Because um, we already have, like, five confirmed characters we know make it out. Um, um, and like I said, I, I, I have a big issue with the Misty scene, at, you know, uh, destroying the, um, the tracker. You seem to have less of an issue with it, but uh, for me, it was a big thing. Uh, besides that, though, like I said, I think it was a great Misty episode. Kind of, I like that bait and switch from last episode where we kind of see like, oh, maybe she's not as bad as we thought, and then the end of the episode, it's like, oh no, no, she's still a fucking psycho. Yeah. Um, I like Travis. You know, I, I think he was like, um, like he wasn't handling it well, but he handled it in a realistic way. Like I don't blame him for like blaming the others and like just like shutting off off everyone, like you know, because he just saw his dad die. Right. Um, Shauna's issues with Jeff were, I think, were good. Um, you know, Natalie and Misty kind of being buddy cop seems like for the storyline. I like that. Yeah. And like I, I said, like everyone just being shocked and like panicking from uh, the plane crash was really good. Everyone did a great job, the actors. Uh, I give this a B minus. I like it slightly less than last episode, but uh, it's still really good overall. Yeah. Um, I think what this show has been doing good too, like so far, is like, uh, you know, they're doing a good job of making sure all the characters like get showcased. You know, like this episode, like <laughs> Misty, they kind of fixed the issue where she wasn't well showcased the first ep. Young Misty, anyways. Well, both Misty's actually, because I forget we don't even meet Misty in the present until like the end of the episode. Which is fine, because you know, like you know, you you can only focus on so many characters at once. Yeah, but I kind of like like there's a balance though. Like if someone doesn't get like focused. Uh, they'll get fo they'll get like a lot of focus the next episode. Like they kind of do a good job, like cycling out who gets like a lot of focus, um, and everything. Like Thais like didn't get a lot of focus this episode. I'm guessing she probably does next episode or like in, you know, an episode or two. Uh, you know, I don't know, but like again, we'll see. But yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it, right? Like I said, B minus for me, B for you. Yeah. Um, good episode overall. Couple issues, but nothing major. Um, solid so far. Looking forward to episode three. I'm gonna watch that as soon as we're done. Um, I got you hooked, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm uh, check on my channel, put pause for if I upload in the next ten years, maybe. Oh, and uh, promote your shit. Yeah, so uh, we have some stuff coming up on this uh, channel. Uh, we'll be doing some more Yellow Jacket content. We're gonna try not to make this channel just Yellow Jacket content. We're gonna AJ and I are gonna try to do uh, an RVB season six review next week and uh the mini series and, uh, we mentioned the last episode we're gonna review uh toy story and uh, spider-man trilogy as well yeah i kind of do that I i'm in the mood to kind of review a movie we haven't viewed a movie in a while so yeah yeah um, so we'll, 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 we'll talk about that um later but yeah we're, we're you know we're not just doing yellow jackets we do have other focuses so right. yeah stay tuned for all that uh and then obviously uh less than fortune 44 uh, the only thing I'll plug is just check out the channel update video my friend Chris and I did today because it kind of mentions everything that we're going to be doing there. AJ's making appearances on there now. He's booking his own uh, wrestling show. Uh, don't, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I'll probably upload that video first. Uh, AJ pulled an upset. He's uh, number two. He's beat my friends who won yeah. wrestling. So he's doing You're stuff. winning number one by a landslide so far, but I'm catching up. Yeah. Actually, we should have, even, actually, we should have like done the numbers, but oh well. Um Ow. But that's it's only it. for the first week. We still have another 24 to go. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you guys for watching this video, and we'll talk to you guys later.